Salvador. So who gave him the password? Who, who let him in? All right, we're just gonna give another, well, another 30 seconds and then we can begin. I do wanna make sure that we're, we're stuck in everyone's time. Um, No, you know, actually, we do have we have a quorum for the exec. Uh, okay, you know, we're going to begin the meeting right now. Madam Secretary, you prepared to take minutes? Yes, I'm right here. Just trying to fix my computer, but I can hear you. Okay, no problem. Thank you very much. All right, so I cover my laptop and then I'll go. Okay. All right. Um. Okay, so I'm going to call the meeting to order at this time. The time is now 7.06 p.m. I wanna welcome everyone to our February 2023 Executive Committee uh, committee meeting for uh, Community Board 9. Uh, I wanna welcome everyone who's joining us this evening. Uh, at this time, um, we are going to, uh, at this time we would normally read the rules of conduct. We're gonna waive the reading of the rules. Uh, the rules are available on the CB9 website. Very simply, we ask that all those who are participating this evening are respectful. We're making sure that we're respectful of the speakers. Please remember to mute your microphones if you are not in not speaking, uh, and please wait to be recognized so that way you will have the floor and we can get you know, we can all pay attention to uh, to your comments and everything that you're saying as well. Uh, just in terms of housekeeping, for all those who are in attendance at the appropriate time, if you wish to uh, ask a question or speak, uh, you can use the raise hand function. If you are dialing in by phone, you will use star nine to raise your hand and that same uh, function star nine lowers your hand. At that time, uh, please listen for the prompt. If you are requested, you'll hear a prompt to, uh, to unmute yourself. To do that, it is star six. So star six will mute, unmute you and it will mute you back as well. Okay, so at this time, we are now going to move on in the agenda uh, to public comment. Uh, Mr. District Manager, are there any members of the public who have requested uh, to speak uh, to the board this week, uh, to the committee this week? Yes, there are members of the public who did. Just give me a second so I can get their name. Sure. Okay. Okay. Um, are you ready to take the list? Ready to take the list. List I have is Arnold Gore. Okay. And then Susan Peters. Peters. Okay. And then Julie Martin. Martin, okay. As of right now, that's um, all the people that I know that signed up prior. Okay, no problem. And again, for any members of the public, if you do wish to speak during the public commentary period, uh, you please use the, the star nine function and we'll add you to the speakers list. Uh, okay, so at this time, if you could please add uh, Mr. Gore um, to the panel, so that way he can address the board for public commentary. Okay. Okay. Hello. Uh, um, I'm Arnold Gore from uh, Brooklyn, New York. Um, I'm opposed to the to the installation of Link NYC kiosks with polls. There have been numerous studies documenting the increased health problems including elevated brain cancer rates and decreased fertility rates associated with wireless. See ehtrust.org slash science. Insurance companies will not ensure the safety of wireless networks. And this just adds an additional layer of denial of liability of uh, protection, which um, our community sustains. The District uh, Circuit Court of Appeals in Washington, D.C., which is one level below the Supreme Court, has ordered the Federal Communications Commission to update its 25-year-old safety standards. This opinion was issued on August 13, 2021. In over a year and a half, they have not done that. We should be able to determine the technology used. Wired technology is 
much superior. See the presentation of Dr. Timothy Shackle, PhD, at New Yorkers for wiretech.com slash media. If you page down to his presentation before Community Board One in Queens, you will have the information about uh, the superiority of that to uh, this inferior technology of wireless. The city council can stop the deployment of towers. The Federal Telecommunications Act still affirms the right of localities to permit installations of equipment for transmission of cellular telephones. The telecom must show there is a gap in service. There usually is not, but if there is, the power needed to complete a telephone call is far below the powerful installation that is being requested. It is necessary that the city enact zoning and siting regulations. A good law uh, was adopted in Woodstock, New York as a model, but it must be tailored to our city's needs. Thank you, and I will email a copy of this testimony since it has links that I referred to, which uh, your members should be able to uh, access. Thank you very much for your for your for your commentary, Mr. Gore, uh, and we'll definitely uh, we definitely appreciate the email with the links as well. Okay, all right. Uh, we are now going to go on to the next uh, person on the speakers list. Uh, that is uh, Sue Peters. Okay. Right. Should be able to. Okay. Okay. While you're doing so, that, so I have uh, Sue Peters. After that, I have uh, Julie Martin. Then after that, I do see Theodora Scarato with their hand raised. So we'll add you to um, describe to the list. Okay, Sue is on mute now. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, great. Thank you. I, I want to piggyback on what Arnold said because it's so important. Um, from the OTI data sets, I can see that your community has six of the jumbo cell towers on your streets. Is that true? I believe that I can't confirm. I, I know I've personally seen at least two or three. Okay. So I don't know what OTI, the city technology office said to you at the time in 2021, when it seems they were being, um, you were being told about it. I hope you were told about it. Um, but I do want to say that it's a myth when OTI, the city, says that the FCC limits have been reviewed repeatedly over the years and found to be safe. It's a myth. And, and Arnold touched on it. Um, and I'll give you a few more details about it. But it's I always think of government is there to protect us at all levels, local as well as national. And when they don't, I get very upset. Um, the FCC limits are from 1996. Very few cell phones were in New York City at that time. They haven't changed these limits, and these little limits that uh, safety for health, they, you know, we should be below the FCC limits to be safe for our health. And in 2013, the FCC opened up an inquiry and said, is, is there a need to review limits? And they decided in 2019, there was no need to review the limits from 1996. So they were sued. And in 2021, the United States Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia ruled that the decision 
of FCC to retain its 1996 safety limits for human exposure to wireless radiation was arbitrary and capricious. And they didn't, FCC didn't show any evidence related to our long-term exposure. Now remember these jumbo towers are 32 feet tall and on the top of them, there can be four or five antennas, not one. It's not, it's not like they're putting up one uh, antenna to send out uh, this uh, radio frequency radiation. They're putting up four to five antennas in each of those cell towers. It's humongous. So they didn't show that this, that our long-term exposure will be okay. And they didn't show with their limits of 1996, they didn't show that our children are safe. Children are more vulnerable to this radiation because their bones are thinner. They're growing all the time. And they and the FCC. Uh, excuse me. Please finish up. Your three minutes has expired. Oh, okay. I'll I'll finish up there. I'll send you um, links to this article, um, to this uh, court case. It's very important. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Peters. Appreciate your, your commentary this evening. Okay. Uh, next, I have Julie Martin. After which, we'll see uh, Theodora Scarado, and I do see Michael Campbell with his hand up. Does anyone else who wishes to participate in commentary this evening, please use the raise hand function and we can take you to the list. Uh, our public commentary is for 30 minutes, so we're going to take as many as we can. When we hit the 30 minute mark, we'll have to conclude that. Oops, sorry about that. Okay. Uh, is Ms. Martin on, uh, promoted? Yes. Julie is unmuted. Okay. Hi. Ms. Martin, you have the floor. Okay, thank you so much. I mean, um, it seems like we're gonna bombard you with this issue this evening because a lot of us are following the issue and wanna share it with our fellow New Yorkers um, uh, because it seems like we're perched on a huge investment that will be hard to disentangle ourselves at a future date. Uh, I wish I could endorse all innovation and any attempt to provide greater access, but there have been a lot of questions raised in community boards across the city in recent weeks that those of us who have been following the issue, the issue feel the need to share with our fellow New Yorkers, possible health effects, lack of insurance against harms from electromagnetic radiation, the unavoidable privacy issues that wireless technology brings with it, the lack of a proper fall zone amongst many other questions. I wanted to let you know that many community boards have been recommending disapprovals, moratoriums and or extensions of the deadline for public comment. Uh, while it appears your public comment period uh, has ended. There are some boards that are putting in these recommendations retroactively. Bushwick, for instance, said that they want to hold OTI, Office of, the Office of Technology and Innovation, accountable to not propose anything further than their initial rollout, of which they have quite a few. Some communities have been, even managed to stop post mid installation, such as up in Washington Heights or the West Village, the Upper East Side, call for a moratorium until the health effects can be figured out. Um, West Harlem, Times Square, Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, there are a slew of communities that would like more answers before going ahead. It just doesn't seem fair that the city is presenting this to the local communities. I, I'm not sure if this is your, the case with you, but as if this were a done deal, uh, this is what we have been seeing and that the only input they want from you is where the polls are placed. But if you look back at the Public Design Commission's meetings on this, their final approval did depend very much on community input, um, uh, yeah. especially for residential areas. They wanted to be sure that the communities actually wanted them. So if your opinion on this is very important because it's still a pilot project of an initial 300 or so. If this goes forward without any comment, then we could be getting 2000, perhaps 4000. They have the option to build on every old payphone site. This is an incredible transformation of the city that is using the need for better internet access as a great window dressing. Um, there are better options such as completing Verizon's fiber optic build out for which, they never for which they charge us all extra fees on our phone bills for years, but never completed because their wireless for-profit side of the company suits the gain by selling wireless plans to complete that final mile. So let's not do the same thing again. Let's focus on getting the fiber built first to everybody's premises, then concentrate on mobile needs. I, I would love to provide you with um, links to what other community boards have done, or if uh, possible, if you'd like um, suggestions for experts to give a fuller presentation so that you can have your questions answered. Um, I would be very happy to do that. Thank you for this time. No, thank you for your, your commentary. And please feel free to uh, send that information to our district office. So that way we can uh, refer that to the appropriate committees as well. So, you know, if there's any additional 
you know, action to be taken, they'll, they'll look at that. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Martin. Okay, all right. Uh, hold on a second. Okay, uh, all right, so next we have, I see Theodora Scarato. After yep. that, I see Michael Campbell. And I do see we have two board members with their hands up, but we'll take them as well. So I will take Francis Leopold and we'll take Teresa Westerdahl. Should I go now or? Uh, yes, I'm sorry, go ahead. I didn't know if the board members went. Hi, I'm Theodora Scarato, Executive Director for Environmental Health Trust, and we're a scientific think tank. Uh, and we are actually the uh, organization, one of the organizations that sued the FCC related to the issue of wireless radiation, cell tower radiation, and the limits that have been discussed in the previous by the previous speakers. Um, these limits are absolutely outdated. They are based on outdated science. And I want to start with, um, I am pro-technology. I use technology all the time. And I think that everyone should have affordable service. Um, there is this notion that has often put forward that somehow 5G will bridge the digital divide, when in fact, the reports that have looked into this have found that, in fact, it could exacerbate the digital divide for, for many reasons, which I don't have time to go into all of them, except to note that what is generally needed and what I haven't seen that the city has done is a report to look into who has who is not being served, why aren't they being served. Generally, I know when I've seen reports like this that cities have done, they have looked into, is there affordable service? Are people able to buy the computers and the devices that they need? And also, is there the training to be able to use those? Those are three pieces that need to happen. That does not mean that you need big jumbo 5G poles in your neighborhood. Now, um, we focus on the radiation issue, and there are hundreds of scientists, hundreds, who are calling for immediate action. And these are not just any scientists, these are scientists who have studied the issue, done the studies on animals, on people, uh, experimentally in Petri dishes, on cells, and are saying that we have a problem the way that the government sets these limits is not protective of human health. Uh, and the there's a, I'll, I will send information uh, and science so that you can see that. I would also add that there, at this time, there is no federal agency that is looking into the health effects, the long-term health effects from cell towers. And 5G is going to be both adding more radiation than we've had before, and also new frequencies that have literally never been used commercially in such a widespread way before. Uh, they're novel frequencies, and many uh, experts are saying there are several issues around this kind of higher frequency radiation. So I'm glad to talk to you more about it, and I'll be sending you that information. I'm glad to take any questions as well. Yeah, I apologize. Unfortunately, this time only because we have a full agenda this evening, we're not able to entertain questions. But, but thank you for your commentary, and please feel free to send that additional information. And you know, we'll, you know, the appropriate committee will reach out as well if there's any additional questions. Thank you. Thank you for your time and your comments. Okay. Um, next on the speakers list, I have Michael Campbell. Then we'll we'll hear from Francisco Leopold. Um, we also have uh, Teresa Westerdahl. Is there anyone else to be added to the list? I'm looking, trying to. Uh, Jason Bird in the attendees has his. And raised. I'm sorry, who's that? Oh, is that uh, Mr. Storid? Yes, in the agenda. Okay. That's correct. That's fine. Okay, uh, then we'll go to Mr. Storid. Okay, go ahead, uh, Mr. Campbell. You have the floor. I, I have the floor. You have mm -hmm. the floor, sir. Um, I'm, uh, I'm applying for a liquor license for Pasa Pasa. Um, mm -hmm. called, I revives on Rogers oh. Avenue. Okay, then, well, hold on then. So before you take the floor, then I'll tell you, yes. we'll come right back to you. We'll actually be on the agenda. We'll, we'll see you when you're in the agenda. Yes, I figured as much. All okay. right. Okay. All right, we'll be back to you then. Okay, so next we're going to go to uh, Francisco Leopold. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, Mr. Chair, I'm just wondering, in walking, I, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm missing something. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I realize that um, more and more we are getting those by wraps in the community. Um, we 
don't have parking space in the community. And I don't think it is a money making thing. There's money is not coming into our, our community. And I mean, we have one right here on Rogers and Empire. And I, you cross over one block, there is another one on Sterling. I mean, are they coming to those persons? Are they coming to the board? Are they presenting that to the board? Are they come, come conducting the survey in the community? Right where I live on Lefferts between Bedford and Rogers, if you, 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 how they call it, you sneeze, you lose, or however the term is, you just jump out of your parking spot. You go around the block when you come, it's gone. On my block at any given evening, you would find four or five cars parked just waiting for somebody to pull out. We have no parking spots. And when those bike lanes are coming, racks are coming, and they're taking up to six, six car uh, spots. I mean, why do we need um, a, a, a bike rack right here and, a, and just across the street? There is another one and they are not taking us um, into consideration. You're coming home, persons are coming home. We have um, 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 essential workers, who, persons working at the hospitals, they are coming home. And when they get home, they can not get a parking spot. They have to sit and sleep in their cars. And, and, and the persons in the community, they are not really utilizing those, bike, um, those bikes in the communi community. Sometimes you find persons from outside come using them. Are, are those persons coming to the, um, to the board? And how many of those are we going to allow? Because it's just like I just get up one morning, I, I walk past there one morning and cars were parked and the next morning I pass, there were about 15 um, bikes right there by the subway. You know, it is ridiculous. We don't have parking in our community. And why are they taking all those spots just to put a bike bike lanes? And that is my comment, sir. And I no. just wish somebody can get some answers from somebody. No, thank you for the commentary. And and we are actually, that, that is a topic that is being discussed by the Transportation Committee as well. Um, and the district office is currently actively taking um, comments and complaints with respect to that as well. So especially if there are particular ones you know of or that there's an issue with, please make sure that those are communicated to the board office uh, so that way we can address those as well. Uh, with the DOT. But thank you for the comments. Okay, um, Theresa Westerdahl. Hi, good evening, everyone. In uh, First, I wanna address in regards to the 5G towers in CB9. We had probably some of the earliest installations of the 5G towers in our neighborhood, specifically on Empire off of Bedford and on Montgomery off of Bedford, very close together some months ago. And there was no hearing, there was no notification. My, many of my neighbors are quite up in arms about it and we brought it to the attention of this community board. I'm a member. So my neighbors brought it to my attention. They brought it to the community board's attention and it was uh, no attention given to it at all. And nobody notified us, nobody let the community know, nothing's been followed up on. So that, and we've done some research on our own. My neighbors have gotten, my block association bought us a, um, a detector, a meter radiation type of detector that we're gonna use together. Um, sounds a little odd, but we're going to do it. And we appreciate you coming to the meeting and, and giving us more information because we are very concerned in my neighborhood about the 5G towers and the, the effects. So thank you. And I hope, I do hope that all that information is forwarded to people in my community because people are very interested and concerned and upset. And I would love our community board to be nine to have discussed that with everyone but it was not ever brought to our attention the other thing is that neighbors wanted me to bring up tonight is there were a couple of shootings on one on um on no strand uh up, up sterling and more shooting near ebbets field and they feel like shootings are up and you know, lives are in danger in these very highly trafficked areas. So thank you very much. That's, I'm done. No, thank you for the commentary. And we'll uh, definitely make sure um, we'll, we'll relay that to the public safety chair as well uh, to see if there's any information they can get from NYPD about that. 
and what's being done and just get some get a better sense of what's going on in the district with that. But thank you for the comments. Um, okay, I see the last hand I see is Jace Sorid. <clears throat> yes, uh, can, can you hear me, uh, Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Great, thank, uh, thank you. Um, quickly, just uh, there, there were a few uh, people who commented. Number one, I would just ask in the future if it's possible uh, that the committee could go to a full room view and not just to have a panelist view. It's a lot more interactive when somebody could see everybody, who your neighbors are, whether to stick around, what issues to bring up. It's, it's more empowering than just basically looking at four or five people. So I think in terms of a community uh, uh, a board uh, meeting, you got to have, uh, um, you know, it's got to be interactive and everything like that. It, it, it makes it feel like, uh, you know, like you're a second class citizen just looking at the five, you know, bits of royalty out there. So I, I would just request that so I could see, you know, who's out there and everything like that. You know, it's, it's a volunteer job. You know, you work for the public interest. Let's go to a full room rather than just having panelists. Uh, very quickly, the, the, the issue of the telephones, the, uh, um, the, the, the telephone towers that they're putting up, the link uh, NYS, I would just suggest that the, the community board fight hard for the people by taking a look at ULERP and seeing how could we fit this into ULERP. They're, they're taking up space on, uh, on the real estate, on, on the streets. That's a ULERP issue. So if you take a look at ULERP, you read the code, and it says, okay, if you use space uh, on the streets, on the, on the, uh, that's a ULERP issue. The community board should demand to say, why isn't this a ULERP issue? It's also a franchise, okay? Link NYC got it as a franchise. There are arguments about helping uh, the poor and everything like that. You can get a free phone. Everybody at a certain income can get a free cell phone, uh, and Link NYC does it. All the carriers do it. Eric Adams also is giving out free broadband to all the uh, uh, low-income housing projects. So the need for it can be questioned in terms of, do you really need it? And there's a studies also that show when you compare 5G to 4G, 5G may not work that well when there's a lot of different buildings that block it, you know? So I would just try to fight harder and advocate using ULERP, the franchise thing, because I don't see this, uh, that's a reason if, it, if it's a franchise and also, um, the other aspect where they're taking up a uh, uh, city property. Second aspect, we're going to have a, at the board meeting, uh, the, the bylaws is, is going to be voted upon. Uh, you mentioned that you spoke to uh, lead, the legal department at, at, uh, at the uh, uh, corporate council. Uh, who did you speak to, Mr. Chair? What was, what was the lawyer who said that everything was kosher and that, uh, and that the, there weren't any legal objections? What was the person's name? I spoke with corporation council. What was, the, what was the person's name who said they looked at the bylaws and there weren't any legal issues? What was the person's name? I, I spoke with Corporation Council. And, and is it, but what was the person's name? Uh, is it, oh, is it the head person there? Like, uh, I think Catherine Conway or something? We have a liaison that works with the community boards there. So there is a direct contact that we work with. Can, can you give a letter? Can you, can you have a letter from Corporate Council that says, I went over the bylaws and there's no issues with these different bylaws and, and that she signs off on that. And if you can't get that letter by the time that there's a board meeting, could you, could you, uh, uh, and if you promote the bylaws, can you say, look, this is subject to me getting a letter from the corporate council that says that there's no legal issues on it because there's some issues on the charter that people disagree with. And when you say that you're- My you're apologies, Mr. Sorin, you're at your three minute mark, please. Great. Can, I, can, I finish, can I finish my sentence? I finish your sentence. Yeah, include. Okay. okay, so can you get a letter, something in writing uh, at the board meeting saying that in, in 30 days or less from the time that these bylaws are passed, you'll get something in writing with a person's name that says that there's no legal issues. Can you, get, can you make the bylaws subject to that letter where somebody signs off on that from corporate council who everybody's relying upon? rather than it being anonymous. Thank the conversation you. has already, well, you're very welcome. Uh, the conversation has already been had with Corporation Council with respect to the bylaws, some of the things that have been contemplated and the authorities of the community board. And those uh, portions that are, uh, those portions that have had issues will be discussed as we discuss those bylaws as well. So it's anonymous, anonymous? The conversation has been had between the chair and my authority with Corporation Council. And you and you Thank won't, you. Thank won't you, get a letter, Mr. Sorry. Okay, Thank we'll you. keep it anonymous. Okay, no problem. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, all right. Um, 
All right, we are now at 7.35, so I think we've exhausted about a half hour. Uh, I want to thank everyone who has actually given commentary for this evening. Uh, so we will be taking that. This is always very helpful for the board to understand the issues uh, and get different viewpoints as well. So where, uh, wherever possible as we can, uh, we do have the committee chairs here as well. So we're going to be looking to, to, to work with the chairs to to see if there's any, uh, you know, if the, the committees will be able to work on those to see if we can get answers. Uh, and the district office will work on that as well if there's direct contact with uh, specific agencies uh, that we need to have in terms of continuing the conversation. But uh, we're going to follow, be following up on on these, uh, and we'll hopefully be getting back, as, you know, through either the uh, the reports here at the executive committee or through the committees themselves as they, uh, you know, um, review the issues. Okay, all right. So with that, um, we are now going to move on to the next item in the agenda, which will be committee chair check-ins. Um, so at this time, we're going to ask for all the chairs to please uh, just give very brief oral reports, two minutes or less. Um, the chairs are required as part of their, their um, responsibilities to make sure that the minutes are submitted. If you have not done so already, please make sure that they are submitted to the district office so that way they can be uh, included as part of the package um, that goes out to the board members uh, and as well as published uh, for public inspection as well. Um, so at this time, we are going to go around the room and only because I see him first and I picked on him first, Mr. Almanor will do parks, recreation and culture. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. Uh, we submitted our minutes uh, from the last meeting. So we had a very, a very great meeting. A lot of uh, issues were discussed, and uh, we took a couple of uh, votes referring to the uh, work that we've done. And then we are initiating a few uh, items, uh, a few projects we're trying to put it together. So we, we are working on certain of visit to various park and community garden. So uh, we, will, uh, we will also vote it in favor for, we voted for the project from the Prospect Park Alliance Villa Resportation after the presentation from the prior year. Uh, the vote was, uh, we only have one person who spoils and we are past music. And you could check our minutes on the website for further information. And uh, that's the extent of my report, trying to summarize more or less what happened. No, thank you very much for your report. Um, okay, so I understand that the one action item you took was you did vote in favor of the veil um, proposal? Correct. Okay. Plus, uh, yeah, only one, only one person who opposed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So we'll look at that in the business section. So we'll make sure we bring it up. Now, the only thing is, I believe that proposal has actually moved on, but I think it's still important for the, the board to actually go on the record of supporting the, the project as well. So we'll vote on it in exec and we'll put it on the agenda for the, the board meeting in, uh, next week. Okay. Thank so, you. Thank you very much for that. Uh, are there any questions for the, um, the, the Parks Recreation Chair and Culture Chair? Okay, seeing none, thank you very much uh, for your report. All right, uh, going along, uh, we have our second vice chair. Uh, Ms. Leopold, do you have a report for uh, Health and Social Services? Yes, good, um, yes, Mr. Chair, thank you. Um, just want to say that we met um, and we are planning a mental health forum district-wide, so, You muted friend, yourself. You're on your, you're on your oh, wow. I'm so sorry. Yes, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So we met and then we are planning for the different quarters um, in the year. So in March, we will be um, having a mental health forum. We'll be partnering with One Brooklyn Health, um, Dunk State Hospital, and Kings County Hospital. We have, have a panel. And we'll also be inviting um, Council Member Lou and Farrah Lewis, as well as we had discussion with them, and also Assembly Member Cunningham. And we're looking to bring in someone from the police department as well to hear their interaction with persons 
when they encounter them, if they are called and there is somebody who's acting irrational, and how do we encounter them, what they look for into identifying um, what this person is experiencing. Is this person someone who has some mental issues or how do they um, identify the issue before they really uh, uh, approach this person or, or violence come, come into play? So we will, we will be meeting if anyone here who wishes to um, have any concerns that you want to address, you can forward those concerns and it will be, because we'll have questions for those pa um, panelists. We'll be addressing um, issues that are plaguing the black community as well, because there are persons even uh, in, the, in the home setting, um, when the, the, what they should look for to see changes and to see what they love once if they are having a mental breakdown and, and what help that they should, you can call and where they should go to seek for help. So uh, May, as I said, May is Mental Health Month and we will be hosting, it will be on Zoom virtual on May 4th. Um, and more information, the flyers will be sent out and we'll have more information going out. And if anyone have want to reach me, and you have any questions, please reach me for the to the board office, and I'll gladly get back to you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. No, oh, thank you very much for that. Uh, okay, so is this something that you've already voted on, and you have everything already uh, voted uh, documented for that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So just for a reminder, uh, and this is for all the chairs. This is a reminder for all the chairs uh, to please make sure that you get that information, especially your vote to the district office, so that way they can always calendar that. And have whatever conversations to make sure that you you know we can support you in, in terms of anything or if there's any other resources we need to bring in as well okay. uh but okay. thank you very much for that are there any questions for the chair of health and social services and also mr chair i'm sorry we are also planning um for a quarterly health segment and i think this um, i think i did mention that to you before because i know we usually have a full agenda um monthly but we want to have persons from Kings County and the, the hospitals in our district with, to talk on um, diabetes and you know the different, just have a little, at, at least a five minutes health segment, a quarterly, so that if anybody have any questions or just issues, um, st things that are really affecting our, our community. No, I think, I think that's a great idea. So let's have a conversation offline. This month is probably gonna be too late. But let's see what we can do for the March meeting. So let's have a conversation and see what we can set up. Just that way we can make sure it's on the agenda. We, we can discuss that for next month. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Uh, we are now going to go on to environmental protection. Ms. Timothy. Hello. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. So we had a meeting um, this month. So of course, the first... Thursday of every month is our meeting. And we uh, continue to dialogue on some of the things that are affecting us in the com community. Um, and now as I'm listening to, you know, others talking about the 5G, uh, I guess we can add that to our um, con conversation at our next meeting. But um, we have sent a number of things to issues, uh, photos and things that you know, we're dealing with to the community board. So we hope that we can get, a, um, you know, some feedback on those uh, pending issues at some point so that we can continue to dialogue. And, um, you know, so if anyone has anything that in the community that's, you know, an issue and it's, um, related to our committee, um, you know, please, let us know or let the board know when they can inform us about it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. All right, are there any questions? Uh, we take a couple of quick questions for Chair of Environmental Protection, anyone? Okay, seeing none, thank you very much, Madam Chair. And, and let's talk offline, let's just make sure uh, so we can follow up on any items that we have to do with information. Okay, uh, let's going to move on. Um, I see the chair of youth services. So you there? 
Dennis, you might have stepped away for a second. All right, we'll come back to her then. Uh, okay, so listen, we will go to, just to throw her off, the chair of Euler. Ms. Moses? Oh, good evening, everyone. Okay, um, our last meeting was held on um, February the 14th, and um, we will submit our minutes uh, so that everyone would be able to you know, get an idea of what we talked about. But there were two issues that uh, we, we we discussed, and we voted we voted on nine seventy five Nostrand Avenue, uh, which is the Hus Hudson Company. Um, that particular uh, organization, uh, they're going to build a supermarket, which used to be, I believe, Associates. They're going to replace it with this new supermarket. And they're going to have a New York City Fresh program. Um, above that, above the supermarket is supposed to be um, 327 new apartment units. Now, how it became a ULIP issue um, uh, that would require the Department of City Planning um, is because they want to add additional square footage so it becomes a zoning. Um, application. So if it was just a fresh, if it was just a fresh certification, they would normally give us like 45 days courtesy review for us to review and give recommendations. But because, because they are, the authorization is to modify its height, that's why it is at this point a EULA issue. So we have recommended that or requested that um, on our next meeting, which is March the 14th, that they come in front of the ULOP committee so that they can explain to us exactly what it is that's supposed to take place. And also with the presentation, we'll be able to ask them a few questions. That was one of our requests. The second um, issue that is, was in front of us is that the borough president um, is undertaking a comprehensive plan to address health disparities uh, in Brooklyn. Now, I don't know why, but the deputy director of the uh, land use requested to be on the ULUP agenda either in April or May of this year. And not just our board, but I guess all of the boards in general. So we have asked Bia to follow up and we have a projected date of April 4th. And the reason that we've picked April 4th is because I understand that there are a number of Jewish holidays that are taking place during the time that we normally meet. And so that's what, that's all the pressing issues I have. And the rest, um, we can really look at our minutes and also attend our meetings and that would definitely give you more information. Any questions? Um, if I may, if I may, I just have a comment because I'm kind of listening to, to your uh -huh. report on the com. I said listening to your um your report on the comment on the supermarket, I, it kind of troubles my spirit because initially when um associated was at that location and the renewal of the of the lease and everything came to play and the the um, Assemblywoman had to get involved, and we got involved, and we, we, were, we were trying to plead on their behalf. And I'm not sure things change um, without some win, um, our knowledge, because what was said to us, and even when I spoke to one of the managers there, the agreement was that they would move out, the, 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 the building would be built, and they will return. And, and utilize the bottom, the, the, the you know, the, the first floor. So that was the original plan because associated, they were in our community and they were not just there. They helped, they service our people in the community, the seniors, block associations, they were there for us, you know? And we could have gone to, you gone to uh, associated at any time and they would assist you with no problem at all. You know, and I think that we came out and we advocated for them. And we, I personally was looking forward to associated returning. So hearing you saying that an other supermarket will be coming, 
you know, it's at the end of the day, it's it's always not as to what the community want is, and it's always what they want and, and, and where the monies are coming from and what they can, we can do. We have our community, our community, we've been there, associated have been there, and we have to look for, for each other. So I am, as at the end of the day, I don't have any way of reaching out to them, but it is really disheartening to hear that they are not returning. Oh, oh no, that's not what I said. Yeah, well, they will return. That's not what they are going and to return. she said an other supermarket. Another say, supermarket, yes. Another, in other words, not the same supermarket. They're going to really try to re rebuild it, you know. And and uh, the square footage is supposed to be even larger. And they're going to bring back the same management. Right. Okay. I I took it that it was a okay. different. Yeah, oh, okay, that's so my mistake. And the reason that and the reason that we want them to come in front of us is so that if you have any questions that you can basically, you know, ask them as they let them present, you know, exactly what it is that you're asking us to look at in terms of the community and in terms of the board. So okay. I, I, I made that mistake. No, one of the agreements, they are going to bring the same uh, persons back. But oh, my understanding, you. yes, but I understand they, they're adding what, a fresh program. Yes, right. Even better. Okay, now, that's my understanding. Oh, but one okay. of the things that, uh, uh, you know, if 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 it is approved in terms of March the fourteenth, I would like people just to come and listen, and that way we all have the correct information, mm -hmm. and we'll be able to ask questions. Thank you so much, Miss Moses, for the for clarifying that. Thank you. Right, and uh, one, I just want to say one other thing before I, I, uh, I, I'm not really quite sure as to what the comprehensive, comprehensive plan uh, with health, with the health disparities is in Brooklyn. But however, it, it, the, the, the persons want to come in front of the ULOP. I'm not exactly sure why, but. Um, Oh, they want. Oh, the reason that they want to come in front of us, they want to present a draft, their recommendations of a draft. That's why they want to come in front of us. So again, we're we're just trying to open it up so that um, so you might want to sit in on this because I'm not exactly sure exactly what that what they mean by uh, health disparities and and how it involves the ULA. But evidently, the ULA chair, I mean, the deputy director of the land use has requested that from the borough president's office. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, okay. Ms. Moses. Okay, um, okay, we're gonna move on. Uh, we can have the, what, we did ULERP, let's do housing. Um, you're on? Yes, I'm here. You prepared with a report for this evening? Yes, I am. Okay, you have the floor, Madam Chair. Um, in regards to our last meeting, um, it was mostly, we talked about Kingsboro. I get a mix up, but it's Kingsboro, the one with the psychiatric center. And basically what's going to be planned is on the 28th of February this month, there's going to be a walkthrough. Um, the community is being asked to walk with breaking ground um, because there was a lot of concern about how they're going to run the facility and a lot of people objected to and they don't want it to be there. So um, if you want to sign up, um, the community board, Khalid is going to be the person that you call at the community board to sign up for, um, to be a part of the walkthrough. There are gonna be two groups, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. Um, and it's gonna be a group of, total group of 15, seven in one group, seven in another. So um, if you want to be a part of that, uh, call the community board, ask to speak to Khalid, and, and tell him which slot you want. We were supposed to have flyers out by now, but I'm sure um, you should see those soon. But mainly, that was what our whole meeting was about, Fred. Okay. Thank you very much for the report. You're welcome. Uh, did you have any, so other than that, were there any other action items? You're good? That was the only action item. We okay. had a... Um, I'm sorry, I don't know if I shared this with you guys. Um, we had a partnership town hall um, with, uh, cause I'm losing track of time. We had a partnership town hall with community board 17 that went really well also. I forgot about that, sorry about that. 
No worries. <laughs> um, and it went really well. Um, the, the elected officials that represent um, Jemani Williams was there. Um, Senator Prasad was there. Um, Yvette Clark was there. And they talked about housing and some of the challenges that are there. And in in, in, in we should venture outside of our community board. I recommend that to everyone, not just come to your own community board because the housing issues that we look at and that we're facing and the challenges, community board 14, community board 17, they're facing them in a different way. So, um, and that was some of the things that came up at the meeting as well, why we should be partners, because um, I don't know if you guys have noticed, development is going down the two to three to four to five, it's going down the train. And the reason we're looking at a redesign of the buses is because they're moving the buses over to make those areas like Canarsie further out, more accessible. So instead of adding new bus lines, they're moving the ones that are in um, densely populated areas. Like they wanna move the 49 over to Notion and they wanna change the route of the 48. Many of us, many people in our community who aren't on social media, who don't have email, we don't know that. And it's going to affect us, but it's to make those areas more accessible. And we should ask MTA to, and I know just stepping on transportation toes very sorry about that. Um, <laughs> but we should ask MTA, instead of making it harder for those of us who use the bus um, to get to, because they're going to put the bus, um, bus stops further apart, add more buses on the line. Because they're moving the buses out, making the bus stops further apart, instead of adding new buses. Okay, so, and that, and all that has to do with housing, it doesn't sound like it, but it does. Because once they make these areas more accessible, then the development um, can move further down faster instead of waiting for new railroads and stuff like that to be built. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much for the report. And I just wanted to also just take the opportunity to thank you uh, for, for, you know, for jumping on that, 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 uh, that co-sponsored uh, event uh, so quickly too, because it was a last minute notice. Um, but, you know, the, the committee was able to organize around there to make sure they were present. And, and I think it was good for us to get in front of the, the elected officials as well to really get their viewpoints to, to be able to express ours. So I think it was very well done, uh, well executed, timely, uh, and definitely looking forward to more activities like that. But, but kudos to the chair and to the committee for, for acting on that as quickly as they did. Thank you. And Fred showed up too. Even though it was out of our district, he showed up. I thought it was good. Quite a few of our um, community board non-members showed up. So yes. I think it's important that uh, everyone knows that because all of us need to know what our brother districts are doing, our brother and sister districts are doing. Okay, all right, I do see a couple of hands up. We will take the two questions very quickly, but we'll have to move on after that. So I see Ms. Moses and I see Ms. Lidl. Um, I just, uh, Beverly, um, if, you, if you have like any, you know, town meetings that you would like us to attend, and I would, I would appreciate if it would go out to all of the board members so that we know about it. And we, that, we did announce this, Patricia. I, and there was, was so much it. pushback. Yeah, because when it was announced, there was pushback at and the I meeting. It, at, at our meeting, it was announced at our meeting. And there was negative pushback regarding it. So we, I remember we announced it. Oh, no, no. When I'm saying it, I'm talking about in writing. I'm talking about how they put out that blast, you know. So there was. That, I, yeah. There was a flyer. I'll go back and check and make sure, but there no, was. It's a okay. Flyer. It's okay. I'll just, just wanted to yeah. make sure that we, you know, we can come out and support, you know, you no. and whoever other groups. That's all. Maybe no. I, I appreciate it, Patricia. Yeah. Thank you. No, that's a point taken. And I'm sure the district office will make sure that they, you know, they'll, they'll follow with that as well. But point taken, thank you. Um, Ms. Leopold. Yes, I just want, I agree so much with um, Beverly because it's something that I've been thinking of that we, you know, we all, we just concentrate and we have ourselves, you know, cooking at our, out our board. But then if we venture out and go to different meetings and, you know, just to understand and see what's happening, you know, at the other at the, at the boards and, you know, we can deal with that. And I, one thing that I, I miss, um, Beverly, as is the date that you said that that's been scheduled for the walkthrough? Uh, the 28th of February. It's supposed February. to be next week, a week from, I think that's a week from today. 
Yeah, sounds okay. right. Yeah. All right. So that's a Tuesday. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. So I uh, and you said it's a morning walkthrough or afternoon there are two. or both? There are two, two. One's in the morning and one's in the afternoon. Okay. All right. So okay. I'll reach out to Philip and to get um more information. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Robertson, it's a late flag, but only because. Okay, well, we'll take your question very quickly, and then we know. I thank you so much. Appreciate all of you. I what you're doing, Beverly. Um, I want to touch on what you're doing with that 49 bus, um, and our transportation meeting. It came up about the bus, and a lot of people in this community, they do not know what's going on. Right. And I had expressed in that uh, transportation meeting that they removed the 48 bus. And we in uproar. We need that bus. We need all of these buses. They've been here serving our community for quite some time, and there's a reason for it. So, I can't ask, you can get 1,500 signatures, they would uh, bring the bus back. We instead got 4,000 signatures. Okay? So, as you stated, we need to join forces with the other community boards. That would be a great help. Whatever forces we can join, we need to do that. And we're 100% behind our community and with you. Okay? So okay, let's get on board. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, we're moving on now. We will see. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I see the education chair. Ms. Baptiste, you're on? Ms. Baptiste? Naomi, you're on? I thought I was still wrong. Okay. Can't hear your audio. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Hello, everyone. Um, good evening. I'm Naomi Baptiste reporting from Education and Library. We had um, a discussion in regards to um, some of the libraries and what's happening with the libraries. A lot of libraries are going through uh, renovation and unfortunately due to the renovation, a lot of our children, school, public children cannot um, attend some of the libraries in different communities. Um, uh, and we also was discussing a little bit of um, a program, an idea for a reading program to be presented from the community to the school district that we cover, which is District 17. But unfortunately, due to the attendance, we can't really move forward. So hopefully, um, as we move forward, because um, it is the month of February, we only have about four more months to do to try to do some kind of some type of representation from education and library that uh, will try. But um, our meetings are held. We were supposed to have a meeting the 14th of February, but there was a conflict of interest. Um, I will have uh, minutes. Uh, being over the district office and anyone who's here, you don't have to be an executive, you don't have to be a member, you could just be a person of the community. You can come in, make some suggestions, make some requests, make, you know, make known of things that, that I myself or anybody in the, in the committee might not be aware of. So I thank you for your time. And if any questions or comments or concerns, I'm here for the rest of the night, or you can contact me through the district office. Have a good evening. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, are there any questions for the education? Well, before you go, are there any questions for the education chair? Okay, hearing none, seeing none, thank you very much. All right, um, let's try youth services. Uh, so are you back on? You services chair, Sol, are you there? Uh, looks like she might be away or having technical issues. All right, uh, we will move on. If we can go to economic development. Mr. Burke, you have a report?
Yeah, Warren, do you have a report for economic development? Uh, yes, I do. Okay, so. Hi, everybody. It's Warren. Good to see everyone. Uh, we had a very good economic development meeting the other night. And one of the conclusions reached was there's a total explosion of new businesses opening up in our district, uh, which on a personal opinion, I I think is due to probably to rent decreases. Um, so one of the suggestions that Dante made to the committee was to do a uh, audit with Bridge Street, uh, which we've worked with before. And we're gonna audit uh, the commercial sectors, uh, meaning like uh, Flatbush, uh, Rogers, Nordstrom, uh, Utica, as well as, I'm just missing the name now, uh, Kingston. Uh, so we can actually define what's going on, uh, which is a, a very good thing. Uh, the other part that we've discussed is the Economic Development Committee's role in the spring event, uh, and we're working on that. So thank you very much. That's my report. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions for the econom uh, economic development chair? Okay, seeing none, thank you for your report. All right, let me see. So I do have a transportation committee report. I will give that last. Uh, we do not have uh, our public safety chair. He was not able to make it. He had his excuse for this evening. Dante, do we have? Well, actually, we do have um, one item for um, public uh, public safety. Um, so, uh, so did you have a report? Can you give? And I know we do have an applicant who is here this evening to join us. Michael. Are we having a treasurer's report or it's, it's um, bypassed? Uh, Christian is here. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that momentarily. So I guess we'll do the, uh, the I'm sorry, can't talk. We're going to do the district manager's report. If the chair would like to give a report at this time, we'll give him an opportunity to give that right after that. And then we'll go into the chairman's report and continue with the, with the agenda. Um, but let's receive the report for, uh, so, so Dante, do we have uh, anything for public safety? Yeah, we do have uh, two uh, SLA applications, uh, Pasa Pasa Vegan, which I believe Michael um, is the representative for, uh, and then also uh, Schmorgesberg. And I'm see, I'm not sure if they're representative. If you're the rep for Schmorgesberg, can you raise your hand? Okay, those were the only two. Um, neither had any NYPD issues. Uh, unfortunately, the committee didn't have quorum that evening, um, but essentially uh, everyone who was present was uh, in support. But again, the, there was no quorum for, the, for that committee meeting. Okay. Um, all right, so at this time, um, I do see that there is a rep, Mr. Campbell. So you're here uh, representing Pasta Pasta Vegan? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Okay, so I'll tell you, we'll give you- What would you uh, like to know? Uh, just tell us a little bit about your business. Unfortunately, because you're, you know, you're, you know we didn't have forum. We well, it's together. not mine. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was there for that meeting. But, um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a vegan restaurant located at 404 Rogers Avenue at the corner of Sterling. It's been existing for two years. The, the, the lady who runs it is a- 44 year residents of this neighborhood, um, 11225 Sullivan Street. She started this business. She's a community member and she's just looking to get a, a, a little more oof into her business. So she's trying to apply for a wine and beer license, you know, the aider, you know, going forward. That's basically it. Okay. So it's a wine and beer license, been here. How long has the business um, been there? Yeah. Oh, she she's been op she's since since COVID like since since two thousand and one she's been there so I want to say two years now so 
she's been going through the, the struggles and she's coming out of it and she just wants to expand a little bit. Understood. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. Okay. So at this time, are there any questions for uh, Mr. Campbell with respect to pasta pasta vegan? Mr. Chair, could you spell the name for me? Because I'm wearing Pasa Pasa, and after that, everything goes down. Oh, Pasa Pasa Vegan. Is that correct, Mr. Campbell? V-E-G-A-N? Yes, it's it's called Pasa. It's a vegan restaurant, but it's called Pasa Pasa, and it's a juice bar and grill. Thank you for the So question. in Caribbean terms, pasta, pasta means mix up, mix up. So, yeah, so simple as that. Thank you very much. My okay. pleasure. All right. Are there any questions for um, for Mr. Campbell with respect to the business? Okay. Uh, not hearing anything right now. So in a little bit, what we're going to do is we're going to actually go and set the agenda. So what we'll do is we'll vote on if you know the exec is going to actually move you forward to to to, um, to present before the the committee, or if, you know if, if we need to go back to the committee if there's any additional questions. So we'll be getting to that shortly in the agenda. Absolutely. Okay. But thank so you should I wait to... or should I um, should I wait on should I, if or you could, just, just in case for text tomorrow? Uh, you know, All if right, you cool. could just hang gotcha. out for a few extra minutes, just in case, just in case any questions yeah. come up. All right. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. All right, man. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. So. That's public safety. So um, I will give a report for transportation. So there is a lot, and I think you've heard some of the um, video conferences are the best. So yeah, for just so yeah, so I think that uh, you've heard some of the you've heard some of the issues um, that uh, transportation has already been discussing. So number of issues. Uh, first of all, I think there are a number of longstanding issues that we've had with transportation in the district. Uh, I think it's been notorious and it's been something that we've lamented in the district about uh, speed humps and, and speed cameras and stop signs and a number of other traffic and safety issues. So what we've done is we've actually created a listing, a running list of all these issues, and we're looking uh, to, to dialogue with DOT with respect to how they're getting these done. And we're trying to change the tact a little bit in terms of we're not saying, well, no, you're not going to do a speed hump. It's more of, well, what are you going to do to address the overall safety issues? So uh, we are scheduling meetings with DOT. They're scheduled to come to the, uh, the March meeting, uh, but I'm also meeting with the district manager to discuss some of the items uh, to see what we can get resolved and to make sure that they have the appropriate background and context for some of these things. So that conversation is being had. Um, tomorrow, very important as well. We are actually having, is it tomorrow? No, Thursday, I'm sorry, I apologize. On Thursday, uh, that. 23rd, we are scheduled to have a uh, transportation town hall, specifically on the B41 corridor, the Flatbush corridor. So there have been conversations uh, from the DOT, and that this is something that's going back to last summer, where the city announced that its intentions to look at that corridor in terms of speeding up bus transit. So uh, the, the most obvious part of that is uh, bus lanes. So that is a conversation that we're having. One of the things we wanted to do was have that engagement with the district to understand exactly what the issues and pain points are going to be with, with uh, to, to any changes there. So we're trying to have dialogue with people, you know, in the district who, who use the 41, who live along the corridor uh, with businesses who are there, um, just to really understand what the impacts are going to be, um, you know, and, and what the expectations will be with that as well. So that's going to be a town hall held this Thursday. Uh, and we're inviting everyone to come and please, um, you know, if you check your, it was on listed as part of the, the constant contact last week. Um, and you will also be getting additional, um, you should be seeing it on social media as well. And we'll be sending it out. Uh, please make sure you forward to, to neighbors and, and residents and everyone. We're trying to get as much feedback as we can, because we want to make sure if they're going to come to the district, if they're going to be looking at this, that they fully understand what our concerns are. Uh, this is one of the few times where it's like we're actually ahead of the project as opposed to we're being told and dictated. So we want to make sure that we're able to come to the table uh, with our comments and thoughts and, and, and ideas about how to improve that corridor, uh, not just for buses, but in general. Uh, we're also having, uh, and it was brought up before about the Brooklyn bus network redesign. So on February 7th, there was a, there was a, um, a district level um, presentation that was given. In there, there are a number of things that have definitely raised some eyes, uh, and we definitely want to make sure that 
we're, we're engaging the community to get feedback and to activate as necessary with respect to that. So we've already heard that I think one of the, 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 the more significant proposals is with respect to the 49 bus. Uh, so we want to make sure we're looking at that. But there are also other proposals along the same lines in terms of they're looking at a bus line that is supposed to run up Empire Boulevard. And there are a number of other things. So the committee is actually going to be looking at that um, next month. Uh, we did receive, and I believe that should have been sent out, um, a district level brochure about what the, you know, combining all those changes in the district. We're asking for all board members to please look at those. Uh, if possible, if you have questions, uh, to please attend the transportation committee meeting if it's possible next month. Uh, and then we're also going to be looking at uh, how do we expand the outreach in terms of making sure that the the, the, um, the issues are being addressed and, and you know and, and expressed to um, to DOT and MTA as well. Uh, I'm going to leave it at that, but just to say that yes, we have the again we have the town hall that's going to be happening, and that next uh, transportation committee uh, meeting is going to be very critical because we're going to be looking at a lot of these larger issues. Uh, I will take a couple of questions at this time for, you know, for transportation. Okay, seeing none. Well, uh, Mr. Chair, I know that you said this, I'm going back to the, um, the streets with the, um, with the bikes. What discussion have you had on those and what can we do? Because and are those persons coming to the board, are they reaching out to the transportation committee hearing the voice of the community because as I said, I am it's 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 really troubling me that we don't have parking and they're just coming and take up all the parking in the community. So what conversation are uh, uh, is the com com committee having with with um, DOT? And I'm glad you asked that question. That is something we've actually done. We've requested that uh, City Bike come and DOT come to the committee to address that. Uh, they've been resistant in terms of coming to the committee with that in terms of they said that those, uh, those those stations are there. They did not indicate that they had, they were looking for the feedback to change those. We're still trying to force the issue. But at this time, what we're asking is we want to make sure that we at least, you know, scope out where the issues are definitely. Um, so with respect to, we've asked them for data about usage. Uh, we're asking for people, if you have filed a complaint with 311, to please make sure you tell the community board. Or if you have specific areas that are problematic, uh, whether taking up a whole bunch of spots or their traffic issues or if there's maintenance issues or if there's traffic or whatever else to let us know so that way we can make sure that we address those in mass and DLC. In, in other communities, I think that in our community, we have been disrespected because in other communities, they have meetings, town hall meetings, not one, not two, not three. And then they, they hear the, 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 the plights of the people, they fill their pulse as to what they want and they move on. And they can, we cannot just sit back and just allow them just come in the community and just take a park and just come and, and just install whatever that they want in the community and think it's okay. No, it's not, it is not okay. It's totally not okay. And we have a voice and we have to come together. We have to bond together to fight it. Some per persons who are riding the bicycles, it, it, might, it might not bother them. There are persons who are happy for the bikes because they take the train and they just jump on the bike. But what's about the numerous? We, in, in our district where we live, as I said, I live in Lefferts, Bedford and Rogers. And from Washington going back to Nostrand, homes there, there are persons with more than one car. We have apartment buildings on, on, on Sterling. We have apartment buildings on Lefferts. We have apartment buildings in the district on, on Lefferts Avenue. You know, and those persons, you know, persons are coming in. Why are they coming in the, in the community, not regarding our needs and knowing that it's a cry for parking and just doing this? It's just very disrespectful to the neighborhood and we need to do something about it. No, absolutely. And, and I think the best thing I would say is, one, let us know the specific areas. And two, tell a friend, tell a friend, come to the Transportation Committee next month, uh, because these are the things that we're trying to ramp up and make sure that we, you know, we're you know, we're, we're, you know we, we we're scoping this out and making the argument to DLT with this, but absolutely. All right, uh, I do see a bunch of hands flew up. So, uh, Ms. Baptiste, we will see you. Chris, we will see you. I thought I saw another hand. Um, so um, we're going to move on to the agenda. So we'll take you two and then we'll have to close. Ready for me? Yes, go ahead, Ms. Baptiste. Okay, you can hear me, right? I want to yes. make sure. Okay, yes. good. Um, I have two two things. First thing is that um, I agree with the bike situation on Troy and on Troy Avenue and Eastern Parkway. There is a section on the service lane that they have taken up nine 
bike spaces for the parking where it used to be no standing. So where the part where there was no standing, that's there and it's also on Albany and Carroll Street. About nine bikes or 10 bikes um, in a parking area that was a designated parking area, no standing. So I just wanted to say that. I'll take pictures and send it to the district office like I always do. So I'll do that. Yeah, um, if you could. And and thanks for saying that. And for and I know there's a number of people on the call who've done so already. If you see uh, pictures, please take pictures. And especially if you know what the condition was before, let us know. And if you can tell us what the net loss is of parking as well, let us know. So that way we can, you know, we can add that as part of the, the conversation. But thank you for that. And the, uh, You're welcome. And the last thing that I wanted to say was about I apologize. Oh, was about, I know that we had um, about the bus situation. Now, by my house, I live on Troy and President Street. The 17 bus is detrimental to Troy Avenue when it comes up Troy Avenue because it goes right to the train station. That and the 46, because I live by Utica Avenue as well, with the select bus also being um, targeted for that. So I hope that, um, cause I know that um, one time that um, if you don't pay for your, if you don't pay your fare, because we have a lot of people that don't pay their fare, that's another reason why the buses have such a problem with um, changing. So I don't know if that, if maybe we can look into that because there's also where it's a monetary thing. And um, because the 17, is like you the 17 and the 46 there's a lot of seniors that take that bus to and from the mall king's, king, king's plaza mall especially so if they have that if it's moved it might be more difficult for the seniors to go from here to there and everywhere so i just wanted to make that clear for um b17 b46 which is the utica avenue bus the 17 is the bus that goes to see to goes to see view from Utica and Eastern Parkway all the way to Seaview. Sea and then you have the 46 bus that, that starts from Kings Plaza and goes all the way down to Williamsburg. So if there's a change in the, if it, there's a change in the uh, direction or place, then a lot of the seniors that are a part of our community will, might not have accessibility to go because you also have the dollar vans that are not really that safe for seniors to go into either. So I just wanted to say that piece, so thank you. No, thank you. Uh, and definitely I would invite you to please come to the transportation committee and invite people along, you know, from the neighborhood as well, because that's the feedback we need to have in terms of this. And we need to try and structure how we get that feedback to DOT. All right, uh, Chris? Yeah, go ahead, Chris. <clears throat> sure, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I just want to comment on the city bikes that have been placed in our neighborhood. And I'm coming at this from someone that has a vehicle that I park on the street. And I'm coming from this as someone that does not use city bike. And I understand the sensitivities around parking in our neighborhood. Parking is, it's like gold when you have a parking spot. It's in short supply. But I would encourage us to remember that parking spaces are public spaces. Parking spaces are public spaces that those of us who are able to have a vehicle use for our private use. And those spaces on the sidewalk and on the streets that we use to park our vehicles can be used in other ways too. And there are a lot of people who ride bikes in our neighborhood, not to mention the fact that bicycles are much better for the environment and cars are polluting the environment, not just through their exhaust, but also through contributing to honking and, and noise in the neighborhood, noise pollution. So I'm just adding my thoughts on this as someone that has a vehicle that parks my vehicle on the street and someone that does not use city bike, but I'm thinking about the big picture here in terms of what is public space used for and how can we use public space in a way that is shared. And those city bikes are shared ways that everyone in the community can use, not just those of us that are able to afford a vehicle, but everyone can use those city bikes. And if one is living under a certain uh, income level, then you're able to even qualify to get a monthly membership for those city bikes at a heavily discounted rate. So I just wanna add my thoughts on that. Thank you. Okay, thanks. All right. Um, okay, I do see Linda Watson-Lord. I do see, uh, 
Ms. Newsom. All right, but I just want to remind everyone. So the conversation is going to be had at the committee meetings and we'll be doing that. Okay. So please, if it's a question, let's ask the question you know, that I can respond to directly. But if it's a viewpoint you would like to get out, I invite you to come to the, the transportation committee okay. or during the commentary period. Go ahead, Ms. Newsom. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to say thanks to Dante and the uh, office for the information they sent out on the bus and the changes. There are some changes, but there are also a lot of good um, routes being, being added. So please look at it before we begin to make stuff. Because say for the 48, the 48 runs the simplest, it just stops a little bit shorter than it used to. And I think that the number 10, I think that will be run from Rogers from on Empire, on Empire Boulevard is like a fantastic stuff because once before the 43 turn and you have to walk all the way down the Utica, now that's an improvement. So there's some improvements that we must give thanks to. And yes, there will be small things that we will complain, but I think if you read it, it's a, Dante, thank you, because the 600 pages was giving me trouble, but you cut out that part and I was able to read it today when you sent it out. And I must say, there are some good things that we could look at. Okay, thank you very much. Uh... Beverly, I see your hand up. Did you have a question? Um, yes. Can we, you, um, you as the transportation chair, and I think I've asked this before, can we reach out to um, MTA and ask them to begin to put postings on the bus? Because I ride one, two, three, I ride three buses almost every day. There are no placards on the bus, no advertisement, no flyers like when you talk about the holidays. They usually go in the front by the bus driver. There's none of that. There is not anything on the buses in this area that is telling people what is happening. Nothing. No, I think that's a fair question. We can ask them if they can actually put that up. So, so thank so, you. So Dante, we'll take that back and we can see if we can reach out to MTA. No, fair point. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, with that, that concludes that. So I did see you come on. Um, did you have a report for you services? Hi, everybody. Um, yes, so I wanted to make sure I know that um, I needed to like report on the two events that we have um, coming up that was um, approved and voted um, with our group, with our committee. But um, the, for, sorry, guys, I'm a little thrown off for a minute. Um, for April 1st, we, we're working to have the job and internship fair. And so I wanted to make sure that I proposed that we would um, love to be able to support, you know, have the, the larger committee support for the job and internship fair for April 1st on Saturday, um, 12 to 4 p.m. Robert McNair Park. Um, we turned in the budget and the proposal. Um, the anticipated cost is 2,500. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I put that out there because we want to make sure that our young people have information around what jobs and internships are available in our community. So do I need to do one one at a time or? Uh, you can present two of them and- we'll Okay. Go. And then we have the Family Youth and Fun Day that's also gonna be folded into a larger CB9 event at the same location on Robert McNair Park um, where we'd like to be able to have um, entertainment, fun, games, um, like a little film festival with um, movies and um, images that young people have made and come up. Um, and so I wanted to um, make sure that I put that out there. The budget for that one is um, 6,400. And that one is going to be June, I think, uh, June, Sorry, y'all. Sorry about that. Um, looking at the specific date. 
It's Saturday, June. I know it's the first Saturday of June. I believe it's June 3rd. Sounds about right. Okay. Sorry about that, y'all. <laughs> okay. All right. So we have the two proposals. Uh, I would probably offer for this. Let's hold off on the second one because that's going to be part of a larger community fair that we're talking about. But you've already submitted the paperwork for that. So I think that's something we can consider. And I think we're looking for some others. And I'll discuss that when I get to the chair's report. Um, but if we can look at the, the first one you talked about, the job and internship fair, Robert Nair Park, $2,500. Um, can you just give a little more information uh, uh, just so that way, you know, the, I think the, the exec has an idea of what you're looking to do with that? Because we've got your budget oh, okay. just to explain that a little bit. Okay, so for that, we would like to um, be able to have various organizations that support youth with um, jobs and internships come out and do vending and be able to have them be able to apply. So like the SYEP application has just opened up. So there may be multiple organizations that will have SYEP available. The youth can come in and um, apply and um, be able to, to get some internships and jobs through those programmings. Um, I would like, the, if we can, to be able to like have a flyer, make sure we put the information out for like what is required. So then the students would know, oh, okay, I can bring this, 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 and this, and I may be able to just apply there on the spot um, with a particular organization of their choice. So um, that's really like the purpose is to really, and then, you know, we can have some discussions and things around helping young people to be like more prepared for the job and workforce. Um, have maybe a couple of speakers, discussions, and um, all of these organizations that provide jobs and internships for our young people and young adults. So um, that's really basically, you know, what it is, is just as, as simple as it really sounds, just having a fair that provides them opportunity and um, information. And I did, you know, also reach out to uh, the commissioner of DYCD to support with getting information about their various organizations, because there's a lot of DYCD funded programs that provide jobs and internships for the community. Okay, thank you very much. All right, uh, let's take a couple of questions first, and then I think what we'll do is we'll see since you made the recommendation for that one and that's coming up, we'll, we'll have a conversation about the first event. Um, okay, I do see a couple of questions. I see Primo, I see Ms. Baptiste. Go ahead, Primo. Just raising my hand, hoping to represent the uh, Public Safety Committee later, because I know that I joined late. I'm sorry, y'all. Just came from like a another event. Um, so circle back around to me, please, because we just have, we didn't have quorum this month, and we'd love to be able to represent the two licensee applications to the Executive Committee. Uh, sure. Actually, we did. Uh, so we did kind of cover yours a little bit. Um, if you have some more commentary, and we did have a representative, Mr. Campbell's here from Pasa Pasa. Um, I think we're good. We don't have the other applicant, but we'll, we'll come back to you. We'll circle back to you in you know, a couple of minutes. Uh, Ms. Baptiste. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Um, I have two questions. First question is that... Um, did, did, were you able, Chair, for the uh, youth, were you able to go to the district office for the schools so the junior school high schools know about this event? That's my first question. And number two, did, um, is there anything where the parents are aware of the application process of SYEP? Can you repeat, because you, you cut out for a second, you said, did I go to an office? What did you say? Let me, let me see this. So I can hear me properly. Can you hear me better now? Um. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. The first question was, did you go to the District 17 office, which is the school district office, to uh, let them know to make it, make your event? I mean, I know it's not plausible yet. But did you let them know that there was something you were having in April? Because I know sometimes they, they like to be aware of that as well. That's my first question. Um, no, but I can definitely do that. 
Yeah. I mean, that, that's one of those we have to approve the event first before she goes. So right. that'll be the next right. step after we do that. All right. Okay. No, and that answers my question. But the second question is, is that will parents be also aware on how the process is at the event? Because some parents don't know about the process. Um, mm -hmm. For if you have a teenager who's 14 or you have a young adult that had worked in the workforce. So I just need to know for the parents, is there any input to help them with the process of getting these people jobs? Right. Question. So, I mean, I would think that like if we're going to put the flyer together and put the information as to what is needed, we would be able to, as we're getting out publicity, okay. we would be able to okay. um, let parents know what is needed. They can also have flyers and information so that they can have their child be mm -hmm. prepared and ready for that day. Oh, my last question is, is that do you have anything for for children who have who are on the spectrum or have physical or physical or psychological challenges to get jobs as well. I mean, I guess we could look into whoever's coming if that's something that they offer. It's just something we could keep in mind and ask if they have that um, information available. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. I do see two more hands. So. Let me see. I want to say I saw Ms. Newsom, and then we'll see Ms. Leopold, and then we have to move on. Ms. Newsom, did you have a question, or was that a hand from last time? I think the hand is from last time, Fred. Sorry. Nope, no worries. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Leopold. Yeah, I just wanted to ask with a quick question. Um, I know she, she mentioned that it will be on the hand, um, on this spot um, application um, at the fair. Do you also have persons who will be working with the kids to uh, teach them as to how to put um, the resume together? So do we have someone who would be able to let them know how to, well, I mean, that would have to be something that, you know, the information is stating what is needed, but we don't have someone on the spot to do that because it would be kind of difficult to do that and have them, you know, that's something they would have to have come with before they enter, you know, before they came to the job fair. So it wouldn't because we had talked about those different things, but it would just make sense for students to kind of know that they need to have one ready and put together um, for that day. Okay. And that'll probably have to be part of the communication in terms of whoever we're reaching out, whoever the partners are if it's the schools or if it's whatever youth groups, so let them know that, listen, make sure you have them, you know, do some work with them before they come. So that way they're able to take advantage of the, the resources that are there. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, all right, thank you very much for that. Okay, so we do have that one. So when we get to the voting section, we'll come back to that. We'll, we'll entertain a motion to adopt that. And, you know, we'll, we'll add that to the, you know, and depending on how that goes, we'll add that to the agenda to go to the full board um, next week. Okay. All right then. Um, okay, I did see. Yes, the uh, chair of public safety, coming right back to you, sir. Okay, right on. Um, this is, I'm going to keep it as short as possible because I know that y'all have had a whole meeting already. I'm so sorry. I had to go to something for my wedding in June, tasting, and I would not have missed this if not for that. Um, so already, huh? <laughs> it was it was a free meal, so I had to show up for that. Um, we had two applicants uh, for our liquor licenses, and we did not have quorum, unfortunately, for this meeting, which is unfortunate and a problem. Um, and I've been talking to Fred about it a little bit, but um, the two applicants, I think, are relatively easy for us to like move through quickly, in my opinion. Um, one, one is called I Revives Cafe, which is like a juice bar that already exists at 404 Rogers Avenue. Um, they're applying for a uh, liquor license and they're only going to be open until like well, their hours are 9 a.m to 12 a.m monday through thursday and then nine to one on friday saturday they say that they don't stay open that often it's a member of the community who's had several restaurants open already um in the area and um you know has been engaged in at large in the community for for quite some time um and, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a the health restaurant, basically, that's looking to open so the, the drinking option, basically, now. 
Um, they have all the boxes checked on their application. So that's application one. And then application two is for Smorgasburg. It sounds like the representative from Smorgasburg um, came or is here. Um, and that is for, you know, basically a beer and wine license for folks to come when they go to this event that is seasonal, of course, at Prospect Park. The hours are incredibly reasonable. Um, they are from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. in the neighborhood. They've been a, a fixture kind of of the neighborhood for several seasons now during the summer. They set up on the south side, um, southeast side of Prospect Park. Um, and, you know, it's just a good cultural event that draws people into the neighborhood. And so, you know, in terms of like members of the community, uh, the community board rather, um, and myself, the public safety committee and myself, we would recommend that both of these kind of be passed through, but I'll pause and see if anybody has any questions. Okay. Uh, now that we have the chair of public safety, were there any additional questions for the chair? I see a hand from Teresa. Ms. Westerdahl, go ahead. You, have, you, you can ask your question. Yeah, hi. Um, some people in my neighborhood brought to my attention that there's been a couple of shootings in the past week. One over on um, off of Sterling on Nostrand and another near Abbott's Field. And it uh, wasn't brought up at the at the council meeting this week. And there are some concerns about new new shootings gunfire. Like really concerned. So I'm hoping that gets Address ASAP. So, yeah, thanks for for raising that, Teresa. I'd say like you know sometimes when we see the temperature rise and more people go outside, we see shootings rise. But um, we'll also invite um, the NYPD to come to our next community, our, our next uh, public safety committee, so they can give us some more direct information on that. Because at this point, um, all I can do is offer a conjecture. We didn't have the NYPD at our last meeting, although we did have them two meetings ago. Um, so thanks for pointing out kind of some of the voices in the community that are that are concerned about that. And um, we'll hope to set up a direct line with NYPD. OK, thank you for that. Uh, are there any other questions for Chair of Public Safety? OK, hearing none, it sounds like you have two applications and we'll, we'll get to the agenda saying we'll, we'll consider those two. But we'll, we'll, we'll consider those recommendations. Thanks. So okay. also, appreciate it. All right. All right. So uh, we've reached the end of the, um, the committee reports. I want to thank all the chairs for all the work you're doing. Um, just a couple of items. One, make sure if you are planning events, please make sure you fill out the budget request forms. Make sure that they are voted on by your full commi uh, committee. That way we know they're approved. The committee is behind it. It'll come before us, be approved by the exec, and then it gets voted on by the full board. These activities aren't just committee activities. These are activities of the board. So we wanna make sure that they're supported. Um, we're getting resources for them. We're making sure that we're pushing them all out. Uh, so please make sure you do that. Uh, additionally, just in terms of attendance, I know that, that has definitely been a pain point for all the committees. Uh, we've already taken actions in terms of making, uh, removing people from committees who have been you know, substantial amount of attendance. Uh, we will be reaching out. Um, I think we've already done that with respect to board members. We're taking good looks at it with respect to community members. Uh, we are gonna be reaching out if you have community members that are that have consistently not been there, please make sure you let us know. Um, I would recommend if it's possible to have the conversations just to make sure that um, everything's okay. But otherwise we're gonna make those movements to, uh, to, to start cleaning up uh, and, and getting really down to, to where you can operate as, as committees. Um, so we're looking for that as well. Minutes, if you have not submitted them, please make sure you submit them as soon as possible. I think they were due before, uh, or they might be due right about now. What, what's your deadline? You had Thursday? Thursday? Thursday, yeah, Thursday. Deadline is Thursday. Please make sure that those are submitted. Uh, and, and consider this as a cycle, making sure, one, that your minutes are submitted. Right after that, please make sure that you are responding to the district office in terms of your agenda for the following month. So uh, we're keeping you busy, but the chairs, we need you to make sure that your minutes are submitted and that your agendas are also submitted so that way we can keep moving. Uh, it helps us uh, move forward and make sure that we have all the documentation that is necessary. Um, okay, with that, um, there's a couple of chairs who might have some action items I would ask you to stay behind. Otherwise, if you don't have any action items for the exec this evening, uh, you are free to go. 
Uh, but you can also, can ask, yes, go ahead. Ask, well, just to let everyone know, you're more than welcome for our next um, Youth Services Committee. We have the commissioner of DYCD as our um, featured speaker um, on the next, what is it, the 7th, 7 p.m. So just inviting everybody out, you know, to come and join us for that. I think it'll be great. Okay, thank you very much for that. Okay, all right, we are now going to go on to the next item of the agenda, which will be the um, the admin, the admin check-in. Um, Mr. District Manager, you have the floor. What do you have for the executive committee? Well, it will be relatively short due to, like, a lot of people have already said some of the things I needed to say um, tonight. So we'll get moving. Um, the March calendar has already been uploaded to the CB9 website. Uh, if anybody's interested um, in the meetings coming up, have them direct them to the website um, and they'll be able to get um, the login information. Uh, once we get the agendas, we will put them up um, on the website in the agendas tab on the website. They will not be on the calendar. They will be on the agendas tab. There is a link directly to the agendas tab on the calendar. So folks, you should be able to find the agendas with ease on the CB9 website. Um, I have heard um, many people br uh, bring up the shootings that have happened across the district. I will make sure that that um, is, ho well, hopefully we can get a, a full report, but I would definitely bring it up at the district service cabinet, which will be next week. Um, hopefully uh, Sergeant Barada will be able to give us an update and, we can, and can at least have some clarity on exactly what happened um, with those shootings. Um, as mentioned before, the SYP application is live. Uh, the deadline is March 31st. I would definitely encourage if you're a part of um, any maybe nonprofit, any community organization, sign up to be a work site. Um, a lot of kids in our district, a lot of youth in our district, they need um, summer jobs uh, to keep them busy. And so I definitely would uh, encourage you if you're part of an organization to sign up as a work site. We will sign up. Uh, in the board office as a work site um, as we have the past couple of years. Community board applications are still open. If you um, are up for reappointment, you do need to submit an application. So please submit the application. The deadline now is the 23rd, so that's uh, Thursday. Um, again, the 23rd is the final deadline um, as of right now for the community board application. You can get that application or anyone that you know is interested in applying. You can get that on our website. If they go to the news, uh, the news section, they can get uh, the paper and, um, copy or they can apply online. Um, as mentioned before, uh, the district level, well, I, earlier today, a district level summary of the uh, Brooklyn Bus Network redesign went out. Uh, to all the board members and all the resident committee members. Um, I know that the Brooklyn bus redesign, the document is a significant amount of pages, I think well over 600. So we were able to get something that was more condensed, focused on the district. I would definitely encourage all of you to forward that information to your neighbors, to anyone who you think um, would be interested in it. Uh, the Brooklyn bus redesign affects the entire community district, not just uh, residents who live close to Flatbush. Uh, avenue. So I definitely want to encourage everyone uh, to disseminate that information. If you know of someone who doesn't have internet, have them call the board office. We will work something out to get them to information. If you live in a building and you know everyone, we'll be more than happy to print out a couple of things so you can disseminate it uh, in your building. So just let us know. Um, we're at the beginning of the process. So this is a really an opportunity for feedback to actually get you know into the process. Um, so definitely look through that information. Uh, hopefully the email that I sent out earlier had a little was a little clear, um, but please review that information um, accordingly. Um, also, I forget which day it was, but recently I think it might have been um, maybe yesterday morning or this morning um, at 431 Finnemore Street, there was a fatal fire in the district. Um, that notification was sent to me by FDNY today. Um, I've already requested follow-up, so once I get information um, on that specific um, incident, I will report that out. Um, with that being said, also I've already been in contact uh, with FDNY. They're they're looking, um, they want to do like a fire prevention um, pop-up something in the district uh, to make people uh, aware um, of fire prevention. And so once we uh, narrow that down, 
uh, I will disseminate all that information. But, um, you know, if there's if there's anybody, any groups that you think, you know, need this information, fire prevention, have them reach out to the board office. We will connect them with FDNY. Um, they they go out for many things. Uh, we've been able to, to have the present. They came uh, for the public safety committee's event um, at Tivoli Tower. They will come out for tenant association, block associations, whatever it is. So let us know. We will connect you um, with them. Um, again, I say this every time, if you know of anyone who needs information, have them sign up for our uh, e-blast. We're connecting to more and more uh, community-based organizations, more and more information uh, is coming into the board office. And so we're trying to, to put it all in one place uh, for people to, to, to get it. So if you know of anyone uh, who uses email, um, have them reach out to the board office and we'd love to have the, uh, add them to our weekly e-blast. Um, this has actually just come up uh, recently. Um, I don't have any updated information on it, but I am going to be searching for it. So uh, this is definitely predates me as a district manager, but at least to my understanding, back in late 2018, there was a presentation um, uh, to erect um, a memorial for the Honorable uh, Shirley Chisholm. I believe that was to, supposed to be at Parkside and Ocean Avenue, that entrance of Prospect Park. Um, Honestly, I've not seen anything come across my desk since I've been district manager um, uh, uh, for this update. So I'm going to reach out um, to, I think that project was under consumer affairs at the time. I'll also reach out to Parks uh, to see if we can get an update um, on, uh, on that specific project. Um, but I will keep you all informed of that. And if you all hear of anything in the community, please let me, let me know. Um, so I can have that information uh, as I reach out to these agencies. Um, also the board office, um, right now we're in um, discussions with uh, HPD, uh, their mobile unit to do uh, bi-monthly pop-ups throughout the district. Um, you know, with HPD, they have a lot of resources. Um, it's a massive agency um, and a lot of folks who live in our district are, are, are renters. And so, you know, what we want to do is to do um, some uh, bi-monthly pop-ups with their mobile unit. Uh, we're trying to narrow down those locations. I, I can just go ahead and tell you those locations will definitely be across the district. They will be um, in um, high foot traffic areas and will most likely be looking at some of the larger um, housing complexes that we have in our district. Um, so I'll be reaching out to some of the housing complexes, uh, their tenant associations, so on and so forth to try to, to coordinate that. But that's something that we're going to try to do routine um, with HPD uh, moving forward. Also, I've mentioned this before, but just another update. Um, it's already on our website, but we are partnering with uh, the Department of Consumer and Worker Protection on March 30th of this year to do a free tax prep workshop. Uh, tax season um, is close. So I believe that tax day is either April 18th or 19th of this year. So it's quickly approaching. Um, if you know of anyone who may need, need um, this information, may need these services, have them reach out to the board office. They can quickly go onto um, our uh, uh, website to get that login information. Um, and then the last thing I just wanted to um, bring up, and this is something that has been brought up multiple times, not only in this executive committee meeting, but um, phone calls galore, people coming into the board office, um, the city bike situation. Um, it, it, it is a situation. I've heard from folks all across this district um, about their either disdain um, uh, uh, about the locations and how um, DOT uh, conducted their outreach for the city bike. Um, right now, uh, what we're doing is we're trying to compile any locations um, that may be problematic throughout the district. Uh, DOT actually has um, a feedback uh, survey um, on their website where you can go in and put in the cross streets, the specific location, um, that um, that may be problematic. And then they also give you an opportunity to suggest um, a different location um, for that specific uh, city bike station. So I definitely would encourage uh, folks to go onto that website. We will send that information out, but I definitely wanted to let you all know that that is actually something that's available. Go on there, submit that uh, information. If you know people who are displeased um, with their uh, with city bike location and or around uh, around their um, property, 
um, definitely um, have them connect to the um, board office and we can connect them to that survey so they can sit, um, submit that information. I will say that um, a request has already been submitted by me um, to the Department of Transportation to see exactly, okay, what can be done about problematic um, locations. Uh, as you can imagine, I don't have a, a response yet, but once uh, I get that response, I'll make sure that uh, I update uh, all of the board because uh, this is something that um, at least over the past week uh, has been coming in and out of the board office. And so, you know, we're on top of it, uh, submit those locations. Uh, and if I have any updates on that city bike and what they plan to do for problematic locations, I, honestly, I don't, I don't know. I can't guarantee that they'll remove them, but at least asking the question is a start. So please send those over to the board office. Um, with that, that's the finality. Uh, uh, that's uh, the finale of my report. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much for your report. Are there any, we can take a couple of questions for the DM. Uh, are there any questions for the district manager? Okay, hearing none, thank you very much. Um, okay, we're going to go on. Before I go, actually, I did want to provide an opportunity for our treasurer. Uh, we didn't have you on the agenda for this month, but did you want to provide a um, a report, a treasurer's report for this month? <clears throat> hi, Fred, uh, hi, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'll decline on the treasurer's report report per se. I'll just save that for the general board meeting. But would it be okay to just um, speak for a minute? Absolutely, you're the floor, sir. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Oh, well, I just want to let everybody know. I mean, the executive board knows, and and the and the district manager and staff uh, know. But um, this will be my last executive board meeting with CB9. Um, it's really been a pleasure working with everybody and partnering with all of you and learning from all of you. Um, I'm looking forward to continuing to contribute to our community and to Community Board Nine in different ways. Um, and I'll have more to say at the general board meeting, but I just want to give a heads up to those who are on this call that um, this will be my last general board meeting and, oh, sorry, executive board meeting, um, and I'll share more next week. Okay. Thank you very much, Will. Thank it's you. It's been real, Christian. It's been real. It, indeed, it has. It has. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So with that, we are going to move. I'm going to try and be as quick as our district manager with respect to the report. I think a lot of items that I probably have in mind uh, have been touched on, but I definitely want to make sure you know, you know, wherever possible, I want to give some additional background. Fred, Fred, are we going to be able to? Are we going? To, are we going to sneak in these uh, the liquor license votes later? Uh, yeah. Listen, I'm going to try and get a few minutes just for this. Um, right after that, we're going to set the agenda. So we're going to put the votes in for the liquor licenses. So give me about five minutes to do this report. And then we're going to go right into those items. Okay, cool. I might have to walk my dog, but I'm going to join on the headphones. Sorry about no that. Worries. No, no worries. No worries. Okay. All right. Uh, so, you know, I just want to say that we've got a lot, you know, from, from you know, as evidenced by the reports that you've heard from all the committees and the, and the chairs and the district office, there is a ton going on in the district. There is a ton going on in the city. So, um, you know, it's really imperative. And this is one of the reasons why we're trying to do those things in terms of improve our efficiency, making sure we're effective, making sure that we're communicating as, you know, as, as well as we can to make sure that we're able to get the work done. Um, there's a lot, but you know, I guess let me begin at the beginning. First, uh, I just want to go back and just give some follow-ups with regards to the board membership. So, uh, you know, this has been a conversation uh, for a while and I think you heard some of the impacts that have been happening. But attendance has definitely been always been an issue um, for the, with the board. So uh, we've already begun the conversations and made movements with respect to identifying individuals uh, who have had attendance issues, chronic attendance issues, uh, and we had started the process in terms of removals. So um, there may potentially be some some applications that are coming before the full board that will be coming up uh, at this next meeting, and we will um, schedule for those to to happen as well. Um, Additionally, not just board members, but we've also had issues with resident committee members. Again, we're hearing the impact that happened on your um, on, on the committee levels. So the communication to the chairs is uh, we've identified some of those numbers. Um, the district office has, has looked at that. We're going to be sharing that with you. Um, to the point, you know, I, I don't want to necessarily the default be boom, you're out. 
But at the same time, I think some of the numbers speak for what they are. Um, I think it might be helpful to have some conversations, but uh, we're going to be looking to make moves in terms of those who aren't able to fulfill their commitments, removing them from the committees or asking them to resign uh, and to step aside. So that communication is going out. If, if they started going out and you'll probably get additional ones. If there are specific members on your committees that you are still seeing on your rosters, please make sure you let me and the district office know. The process would be that the request has to come from the chair of the committee to the uh, chair of the board that you would like them removed. Um, and then I would just concur with that, but we need to make sure that we follow that specifically as well to make sure that the process is proper. Um, but on the positive side, uh, I, I do wanna say that uh, I wanna thank our district office. We had our Learn About Your Community Board public session. Uh, so we did that on February 1st. Uh, and I think it went very well in terms of we were able to speak to certain, you know, to members of the public who have an interest in the board. Uh, you know, I think we try to convey a little bit about what we do here, uh, some of the activities, uh, answer a few questions as well. So we're hopeful that that was well received and we're hopeful, uh, hopeful that some of these members, you know, some of the members of the public will, will take that next leap in terms of uh, applying for Community Board 9 and joining us. So that was done on February 1st. And as the DM had said, the application membership deadline was extended to February 23rd. Again, if you are, uh, if, you're, if your term expires this year, please make sure you submit by the deadline because after that, there, there's nothing we can do. Uh, you will serve out the rest of your, if you are not reappointed, you know, if, you're, if your application is not in, they're not gonna reappoint you. Uh, you will serve out the rest of your term, but after that, you will have to, um, to leave the board. Um, so please make sure by the 23rd, uh, you've done that. The, 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 the website is on the community board office. If you go to the borough president's office, is there as well. If you have any questions, please reach out to, to see if we can help you in terms of getting any answers. Okay, next, and I mentioned this as well. So remember, on, again, on February 23rd, there is going to be a Flatbush Avenue Corridor Town Hall. We are asking for everyone to please make sure you spread the word. Let people know about this. This is gonna be something, the 41 corridor is, I think what, it, it might be the fifth or sixth busiest corridor in, in the city. Uh, it's major. And you know, I think those of us who take the bus understand that there are definitely a lot of issues with that, that line. Uh, we wanna make sure that we are proactive in terms of making sure that there are not changes made that, that are counter to what we would like to see as well. Uh, so we're asking for everyone to please come. Uh, we're looking forward to a lively conversation. We wanna get input. We want, uh, so make sure you let the neighbors know. We wanna come away from there with a better sense. Okay. Kind of if I could please ask if everyone can keep their microphones mute, muted if you're not speaking or asking a question. Um, but yes, please make sure that uh, everyone, um, you know, if you, you know, make sure you spread the word. Uh, won't beat the dead horse, but the Brooklyn Bus Network redesign, another very important conversation. So we're getting information on that. Transportation is gonna be very busy over the next couple of months. Absolutely invite uh, members of the board uh, and, and residents of the community to please come to the next transportation committee meeting because this is, this is going to help us in terms of figuring out the next steps and outreach. Uh, thanks again for that suggestion about uh, making sure we're putting MTA placards because we wanna make sure that the community is involved in the process and giving us the feedback input we need. So uh, that part. Um, City bike lift, again, if there are any complaints, issues about placements uh, or other issues, please make sure. Uh, and this is for all issues that happen in the district. Please make sure you call 311, lodge your complaint. And after you do that, please make sure you contact the district office so that way they can track it on that side as well. Uh, the more data we have is the better because then we can start tracking these things and we can we can escalate them as necessary and share them with, uh, with, our, with our elected officials as well. Um, so we talked about, you know, uh, it's gonna be very busy in the district. So we've talked about potential uh, ULERP actions. So there is a uh, 975, there's a potential uh, for that that's gonna be coming up. City of Yes is a conversation that's also been happening in the ULERP. Um, and there are potentially might be text amendments that are gonna come up through that ULERP process. So that's gonna be something that we wanna make sure that we're absolutely supporting that, we're keeping an eye on that, we're educating ourselves uh, because there are gonna be potential impacts with regards to, um, you know, to, 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 to development and to, to some of the plans that uh, the mayor's put forward. Uh, I'm skipping around a little bit. Oh, also, I did want to discuss a development as well. So there is actually a shelter that has been cited at 205 Parkside Avenue. So that has been cited by the Department of Homeless uh, Services, I believe. Uh, I, can, I have to double check which agency it is. But we've requested that they come to the board uh, and speak with our committee to address uh, what, what's being cited how many people are being cited, what supports are there, what resources are there, 
and basically answer all our questions as a district as well. So that's a conversation that we're looking for uh, for them to come to one of our committee meetings um, and and address that uh, address that in, in terms of talk about how they're being supported and what else is going on. Uh, uh, a piece of good news I did want to announce, and I'm you know happy that our, our district manager was able to attend SUNY Downstate. Although outside of our district is kind of in our catchment, they announced a partnership with Maimonides uh, for uh, increased cancer screening and treatments. So it's down um, not too far, you know, just outside, but it's part of our catchment. And it's good if we have opportunities to improve healthcare in the district or in the in the neighboring district as well. So uh, our district manager was able to go and represent the board for that, and I, I thank him for that. Um, Bylaws amendments. Um, so we're taking the tact of we're doing this um, piece by piece. So definitely, I know that there were there was some concerns about trying to tackle the 18 or 19 uh, amendments. So we're looking at it on a monthly basis. We're going to dedicate some period of time uh, with respect to considering amendments and, and having the conversations around those. So what we're going to do is uh, I think we'll be able to set a time limit very similar to what we did last month in terms of how much time the board is going to be able to based on what we have on our agenda for that month. Um, with that being said, I just, you know, again, I think it's important that we're making sure that we are very focused in our meetings. Uh, we're asking the pertinent questions. We're making sure that we are concise in our speech and getting right to the point. So that way we can get the, these things done and move forward and, and continue the conversations. Uh, and last, I just want to point out very quickly um, with regards to the community fair, so this is something that we did last year. I think it was a really positive experience. I came away really excited about this community and this board. Uh, and this is something we want to duplicate this year. So what we're looking for is that the district office is going to be running admin point on this. Um, so the question or the, the request is for all the, uh, the committees. Um, I'm glad to hear that Parks has already started the conversation. I know, I'm glad to hear that Youth Services has started the conversation and I'm asking for all the other committees as well. To, to make sure you're looking out and thinking of if there are any activities or elements that you would like to see added uh, on top of what we did last year, we accomplished last year. So please make sure you're you're vetting those, you're you're you know you're creating the plans, uh, scoping out budget and bringing that to our attention. So voting on it through your committees, bringing it to the exec, so that way we can understand fully the scope of the kind of programming we want to have at our um, community fair. So um, a number of those things are gonna be determined by timing in terms of when we can get permits. Uh, you know, budgets obviously are gonna play a role in that, but the way we're able to make decisions is when we have the information and the data in front of us. So please continue doing that. Um, I would ask for that information sooner, much, much sooner rather than later. So that way we can get it before the, um, the, the district manager and uh, I guess the, uh, the treasurer to be, whoever they are out there, in the world uh, so that we can have the conversations and and really make sure that this is something successful and even bigger than what we did last year which is phenomenal uh, event uh, so that is all i have uh to report at this time informational purposes uh, i don't have any action items other than i think what we discussed in the other committee meetings uh committee uh committee uh, reports um okay at this time i will take any questions Going once. I don't have any questions. I just have something to add. Yes, go ahead, sir. Yeah, so I missed this on my report, so I just wanted to bring it up. Um, I believe back in November of 2021, I believe the Department of Transportation presented either to the Transportation Committee or the board regarding the Washington Avenue improvement project. Um, I haven't seen an update on that, so that's also something else I'm going to ask for an update on. Um, I couldn't find any any information anywhere uh, on that capital project. And then also, um, this is something that I haven't seen in our community district, but one of the other district managers and another community board in um, Southern Brooklyn had sent me neighborhood loading zones um, are apparently popping up all over the place. So if you just so happen to see one of these uh, pop up, please let me know immediately. I've, I've already requested from DOT to see if we can get a list. Um, if these are coming to our district, and if so, a list of the locations. Um, but I just wanted to add that, and updates will be uh, in the future. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any other questions uh, for the chairs uh, for my chairman's report? Ms. Westerdahl, I see your hand. Yeah, I just want to. Um, Sante mentioned uh, Washington Avenue. 
on um, Empire Washington. That, that is that what he's talking about? That area that used to be a park that's now just concrete, and there's no border where the driveway is in the Western mm, Beef. No, you just not, grab right. That's, yeah, that's an awful kind of mess there. There's additional construct that that's been an additional construction that they're doing, and construction has been delayed because of other issues that they've had. They're still supposed to be cleaning that up. I can't remember what the deadline is by when they're going to. It's just it. it's just a huge concrete block now. I mean, they the, took out all the trees. They took out. There's like one little spindly or two little spindly trees now. It's just complete concrete. Right. Yeah. My understanding is they are supposed to. I thought to that green, was a park. Right. They are supposed to green up that area. I don't know what this is going to end up happening, <laughs> at, but they are supposed to green that up. Um, but part of it is they haven't even finished all the construction and the other nonsense around there because I think they've had issues with water pipes and a bunch of other things. Um, but that's something that we're, we're definitely keeping an eye out on. We're going to ask for those kinds of improvements. But the other, I think what our district manager is talking to is I think a little bit further down Washington, that strip going towards. Claxton towards Ronald McNair Park, there have been conversations or there was a proposal that was floated about doing some stuff over there, I guess kind of similar in terms of closing off the slip road, which is a conversation that we need to, to, reign, um, to, 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 to reignite. So that'll be something that we're looking into. All right. Uh, Ms. Newsom, I see your hand. Um, Ms. Watson. Who would be, Fred, who would, that the closing off the slip road that the 48 goes down? The slip road, yeah, by Washington. The, Never, right. I mean, to, remember, Washington divides up. It, it divides you know, into class. goes by the museum, and then class and goes by the public schools. And so that was the Beverly, conversation that was that, yeah. Oh, my God, that's my, the that's my, my memory of that, of that project was that that turn is very dangerous, and cars often just fly around that turn off of Washington onto Classen. And so it's like a real pedestrian hazard. And I think they were basically just looking to improve the line of sight for pedestrians and for they're closing off the road, but I think they're making changes to that intersection to make it more safe. How, how are they gonna- Ostensibly, well, well, hold on. You know, and I don't want to necessarily get into the conversation right now. But, yeah, well, well, no, on. never mind. Yeah. I can't, I can't. No. Ostensibly, that's what it was, but that's a conversation that fell off. Uh, so to the district manager's point, uh, we kind of want to figure out where they are on that one and not be surprised by if they say, oh, yeah, by the way, this is what's going forward. Um, so, Thank so we're you, gonna, Fred. We'd appreciate it. Yeah, we're going to re-engage with that. Uh, yeah, hey, Ms. Fred, Warren, I just want to say this was all discussed last year, and there were presentations from the Department of Transportation to the board. So that's just something to integrate. Thank you. Right. So, and we're going to pick that conversation back up. Thank you. Um, do, 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 do. I saw Ms. Watson. Do you yeah. have a question or are you good? I just want to make a comment um, on something. Today, I was trying to remember exactly which department I got it from, but on my computer popped up this survey and it was asking about um, commercial, commercial vehicles being parked on your street. Does uh, anybody know you. about that? Yes, actually, thank you okay. for saying that. Uh, Dante, I think that's with respect to um, the overnight truck parking. Yes, that's it, overnight truck. Yeah, yes. overnight truck parking. There is a survey that has actually been launched by the city, and I think that one's something urgent. So, Dante, if you can make sure you get that out. So, I know we've had quarters in the district. I know particularly it was at Winthrop, like not too far from, um, I think Winthrop was one of the corridors where you used to have the trucks park, you know, the truck drivers would park their trucks overnight uh, because they couldn't find anywhere awesome. else to in the cars. It was Clarkson, thank you. On Clarkson, they would leave the trucks overnight uh, because they couldn't find anything else. And you'd see rows and rows of them. I think uh, Flatbush Avenue by Prospect Park was another similar area where you used to do that. They would just park the trucks overnight uh, by the by Prospect Park or the Botanic Garden. Um, but anyway, in any case, so they, they're doing that. Uh, there's a survey that's been launched. So you know, please share that. If you know of any places where that's a common occurrence, Please make sure we're reporting that so that way the city can, can, can do the follow-ups that they need to with respect to that as well. I just want to add here that Unilla Perry, uh, who lives in that segment of our community on Clarkson, uh, in the Stevenson houses, has been very active and she does have information. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, all right then. Um, 
All right, we're going to close on that. Uh, so now we are now going to move back. Uh, well, we're going to move on and we're going to set the agenda. But before we do that, there were a couple of items that we put that I think we would want to vote on um, uh, in terms of action items for the committee. So first, let's consider the liquor licenses um, that were, um, you know, for public safety. So, um, Primo, correct me. So I believe that you have two licenses. One was for Irie Vibes. Is that is that Pasa Pasa? That's that's correct. Yes, Pasa okay. Pasa is Irie Vibes. Okay, so we have Irie Vibes. Um, now, what's that license for? Because I think, uh, Mr. Campbell, when you're on, you said it's a wine and beer, or is it a full license? Yeah, Mr. Campbell, feel free to jump in. Sorry, I'm on my phone, so uh, you know whether clear? it's we full might license. Have I'll see him. Let me see if I can uh, track down the. If you can also just pull up the application if you're on a computer, it's in our agenda. Um, but if not, let's do. Uh, I'm walking back home, so why don't we just knock out? Um, okay. The so second yeah, one. That. Yeah, and Schwarzberg is the second one you said, correct? And that is a wine and beer license that I do know. Um, it's not a full liquor license, and it's 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Okay, and that's seasonal, uh, correct? On Sundays during the, from, I think it's May through October. Yes, correct. Thank right. you, Warren. Okay. All right, so let's look at that one first then while we're getting the information. So, well, well okay, so now are there any questions with regards to the application? This is, a, this is an annual application. They come to us every year or every two years or so. Um, but this is something that's normally done within Prospect Park. Uh, I don't think we've had any issues. Uh, Dante, can you confirm? I don't think we have any uh, complaints or issues with NYPD or anything else, do we? We have no um, complaints for either location, which we covered during the committee meeting. Okay, thank you very much for that. All right, um, so with that being said, are there any questions with regards to either of those applications? It's Warren, I just wanna add that Smorgasbord on the Sundays, uh, they estimate that 10,000 people visit that site and they go through our community, which is, you know, good for our ancillary stores. Thank you. Okay. No. Okay. Thank you very much for that then. All right. So with that, uh, I will entertain a motion, uh, and this is for members of the executive committee only. Uh, actually, and just for the record, let me confirm. Uh, Warren, I, I heard your voice. Ms. Leopold, I saw you as well. Uh, Ms. Watson-Lord, I see you as well. Uh, Chris, Chris, you still with us? Uh, yes, I'm here, but I didn't raise my hand. I don't think. No, 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 no. Just no. I'm just confirming uh, attendance because we're going to have a couple of votes coming up. Oh, I apologize. Yes, I, I am here and and ready to vote. Okay, I see Mr. Almanor. I heard you, Kyrie. I thought I saw Kyrie on. Hey, he's here. there. He's there. Okay, and Kyrie is on as well. Okay, so we have a full house this evening. All right. Um. So with that being said, um, I will entertain a motion at this time for the executive committee to um, to uh, approve this being moved on to the general board for uh, no, moved on for a full vote by the general board. I uh, second both, the motion. Both liquor licenses. Okay. Yeah, for both liquor licenses. Yes. yes. Okay. I have yes. it moved by Warren Burke, and I heard a second. Kyrie, is your second? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Second yes. by Kyrie. Okay. Uh, are there any questions? Hearing none, um, hearing no objections. Do we have common consent? Are there any objections to common consent, approval by common consent? No. No objections. Okay, hearing no objections, they are uh, approved by the board by common consent, by the executive committee by common consent, and they'll be on the Thank agenda. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much, Primo. Okay, uh, we are going to move on. So now we have uh, youth services. They have a proposal for us for a job and internship fair scheduled for April 1st. Okay, uh, and I think those are projected budget of 2,500. So let's discuss that one. Let's discuss that one. Uh, that one we, we would need to, I think, approve now because um, because of the deadline in terms of if we're gonna do this event, we'd have to approve it at this, this month. Well, um, Mr. Chair, could I remove myself from this item for now? Uh, when you say remove, you can abstain or you don't, you know. I don't want to not even vote on it. You can abstain from it. So when okay. it comes up, you can absolutely abstain. 
that would be all right. Um, okay, all right. So we have the youth services forum scheduled for then. Um, there is a budget for 2,500. Uh, I guess the, the question I have is, uh, do we have 2,500? Or, you know, um, I guess this is a question for the district manager and for the treasurer, if you've had an opportunity to look at that. Is this something that the board budget could support or at least some portion of thereof? Yeah, the uh, board could do a portion of it more focused on the chairs and tables for the event. Uh, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to do the full um, 2,500, but for the chairs and tables, I believe that that is something that we'll, we'll be able to accommodate. I don't remember off the top of my head. I'm trying to look through to uh, get the number, but I believe it was like $400 for the chairs um, and seats, but I'm trying to confirm right now. Okay. Um, Chris, did you have any questions with respect to that? I, I apologize, uh, Mr. Chair. Can you say again which event we're referring to? This is for youth services, the job and internship fair. Yeah. And are we only considering that youth services uh, event right now? Yeah, I want to table the second one only because I want to take that and, you know, I, I want to kind of get all the community fair stuff together. So that way we can look at what portions there, you know, we can consider. Because I think uh, this is one, we've seen one other from Parks. I would like to see if there's any others so that way we can look at them as a whole package. Right. Okay. That makes sense. Have, yeah. Only because we have a little bit of time to consider that as well. So we, if we can get some more information. That makes sense. And also, just to make sure I'm tracking well, um, that proposal from Youth Services has cleared their committee, but it has not been voted on either at exec or the general board meeting. Is that right? Correct. So if we're comfortable with the event, we would forward it to the board for consideration. Um, and we can talk about if there's any, um, if there's any um, conditions or, or terms that we need to set with that as well. But, but otherwise, from what you've seen, are, you know, do you have any, any major concerns with regards to the event? Uh, financially, no, I think what Dante mentioned is, is correct. You know, we can fund, there's money to fund a portion of it. Um, my concerns are more about the labeling of the event and making sure that that event is, uh, does not have any affiliation with anyone who serves on that committee and their, uh, their work or, you know, volunteer work with nonprofits, but financially, to answer your question financially, yes, uh, what Dante said, I, I think is correct and, and we could fund a portion of it. Okay. All right, right. Swan, I, yes, you know, there's a big difference between 2,500 and four or 500. So I think whatever motion is made has to be very specific based upon what the board can do and not do. Right. And, and my recommendation, my thoughts on that are, you know, I think it's a good event. I think it's a necessary event. I think it's a job fair. I think it's, it's a real win to the youth in the committee, in the, in the district. Um, obviously, we can't fund everything. So I would probably be more comfortable of we can approve the event subject to budget availability. Uh, and that will leave some conversations with the, you know, with the, uh, the committee in terms of we can do this, we can do this. We can maybe pass a hat to see if we can get some other stuff, but we have to make sure it's like, you know, if, if they can't make do with that, then they can't do it. But if they can scale it back considerably to something we can fund, then why not do it? I think. Well, the, the additional alternative there is, is for the committee, because it's just an excellent cause uh, to see how they can raise funds. Right. You know, besides what we can do, uh, because we shouldn't just say that we can only do 400. We can also say, well, despite the board, what else can we do to make this happen? You know, I, I agree. I think, and I think that's the sentiment I would like to have with that, where it's like, yeah, listen, if you have, they have connections. If we have connections, if you know, if we have uh, people in the community who would be supportive of something like that, we can ask for, for contributions in kind. We can talk to the um, elected officials, uh, see if there are any vendors who are sympathetic to it. But, uh, but, but I think perhaps the best way to proceed uh, is at least to approve the event subject to avail um, budget funds or, you know, subject to uh, budget availability. So I agree. we can get the money. Okay, great. If the money doesn't come in, then it is what it is. It can't happen anyway. Yeah, but if so, could have some conversations with me or Dante 
just so we could see what's going on here because we have very little information on this and how do we make it happen? And that should be the objective. Absolutely. Chris, I see your hand. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I appreciate the, the, the sentiment and the, the, the idea behind you know, approving the event subject to budget availability. I also know, though, from my time with, uh, you know, leading the Environmental Protection Committee that uh, when, when one is trying to plan a, an event, it can be helpful to be, to know exactly where their money is going to come from. Okay. So just a suggestion, it may be more useful for the chair of the Youth Services Committee to know that CB9 can fund, as Dante said, $400 towards that event. That way they know exactly what to plan for. Just the, something to consider. Thanks. No, no, thank you for that. Thank you for that point. Okay, all right. Um, are there any other comments with respect to that? Any other comments? Yeah, I, it's Warren. I think we, it, and this is being constructive, not non-supportive. I think we should table this and get more information, go to the next meeting and really have a plan of what we can do and can't do. The only issue that arises from that is because of the date of this event, it would be April. So we're at the end of February. So if we don't approve it this month, this probably doesn't happen. Okay, so I withdraw my comment. Okay, thank you very so much. I thought I heard. Okay, so listen, so at this time, um, I would, I think it's appropriate for us to entertain a motion to approve um, for the executive committee to approve the event subject to budget availability. So made. I see it moved by Warren Burke. Do I have a second? Second. I hear a second by Francisco Leopold. Uh, any other questions or unreadiness? Okay. Hearing none. Uh, just, uh, just a, just a oh, question, ahead. Fred. Yes, I'm sir. sorry. Yes. No, go ahead. Uh, so, what would we? What are we saying then to you, Services Committee, when we say budget availability? How much should they be expecting that CB nine is going to fund? Uh, I believe for the district manager, we got four hundred, and we'll work on seeing what else we can get. Okay. All right. Yeah, I think so we're by, all we're all by by seeing, Thank you. But by seeing what we can get means fundraising. Let's be clear. Correct. No, no. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Right. No, no, no. I mean, I, you know, I mean, if, if the DM said four hundred, it's. 400. So, I mean, it's obviously other sources that we have to, to, to get Okay. There. And I'm certainly happy to work with them to see where we can raise money. And I have a question. Yes, really sir. quick. It's just, is it $400 in total or was it that it was the $400 is only going towards the tables and chairs? Or uh, is it that we have the tables and chairs and the value of that is at value of $400? No, I don't think we have. It would be four hundred dollars for rental. Well, you know, let me not speak to the DM. Uh, Dante, is that correct? Four hundred dollars for rentals? Yeah, it, it would definitely be rentals um, because we don't have space to hold uh, all those chairs. But yeah, it would be four hundred dollars for rentals for chairs. And I, 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 I would say this, um, you know, um, just the reality of the world is uh, global markets do impact how much we have to pay. Um, production, shipping, depending on what we're trying to purchase to so just take those things into consideration. Um, yeah. Dante, could you review just for our discussion what the community board is able to pay for and not in terms of an event like this? Okay, um, that's a very difficult question to answer, but what the board, so for this event, the request was for um, chairs and tables, food and beverage DJ, uh, and then like supplies, giveaways, and t-shirts. Um, looking over this budget, you know, I really felt like the chairs and tables right now is something that we can work with, right? Like that's definitely something um, that I think that the board office can, can accommodate. Um, I will be honest, like with the discussions of the community fair uh, quickly approaching, um, we, you know, we have to, I, like, as a manager, just have to be cognizant of, I don't know how much you guys are going to, <laughs> to do for the community fair. So I have to make sure that there's enough money in the budget for that. But looking over that um, request coming from the committee, uh, the chairs and tables um, uh, were something that we can do. And, and just to, for clarity, um, what, when looking at these things, I truly think about, okay, is this something 
uh, that the board has done before, right? Like chairs and tables is something we can do. We try to stay away from like food and beverages because that gets a lot of, yeah, it's extremely bureaucratic. Yeah, but um, Dante, we're not allowed to pay for food and beverages for residents. Is that correct? Right. Yeah, that's correct. So we let's say, okay. Yeah, we can and, do you know, let's not beat around the bush here. So let everybody understand. So we can't pay for food and beverage. Okay. Could we pay for entertainment? No. Okay. So what else is requested? Uh, the yeah, chairs and tables were requested. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's what we could uh, pay the for. The giveaways is probably in the, yeah, yeah, so and the giveaways probably end up not being anything. Yeah. So. Yeah, so let, let all the chairs understand that we can do X, Y, and Z based on the city requirements. So when you say you can't pay for food and beverage, it's not that, that, that our desire is not to, it's, that's a, it's just that we're unable. Right. That's my but, point, but, thank you. But, but the only thing I would say is this, and this is just for all the chairs as well, just to have the context. When you're planning an event, if that's what's required or desired for that, I would say ask for it. Um, with the understanding that that might not be something funded through the board office, uh, we may send you to Warren to say, "Let's work with Warren so you can get some 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 money for the food or whatever." Yeah, right? I'm but, pretty good at fundraising. So yeah, but but just that, right? But I just wanted to make sure that we're looking, at, you know, at the, the 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 totality of the event. What are we trying to accomplish? What are going to be the touches that make it an appropriate and and, and good event for the board? Um, and then administratively, we will have whatever conversations in terms of what we can do here or what other sources we, or what other resources we need to bring to bear with us. But, but I yeah. wanna make sure that we're moving forward. Um, so I do see uh, Linda Watson Lord, and unless there's any other questions, we're gonna call the question from there. Uh, oh, I see Pat Moses as well. Uh, okay, Linda Watson Lord, and we'll see Pat yes. Moses, and then we're gonna close. I just got one simple question, and I've been um, sort of like uh, worried about this for a while. If a, com if a committee wants to host an event, how do they submit um, the proposal and the budget to the board or to the, to the office? Because I, tonight, I'm on that committee, and tonight, just not, not tonight, a few minutes ago, I got a notification, and something came out of my committee, which only shows me some notations, or actually, what do you call it? Some notations of the event, but nothing shows me the cost on this. So I am commit. I'm a board. I'm a, I'm a. Unless I lost something somewhere along the line, so I am a little bit. So so that's my reason for really wanting to stay out of the out of the um, conversation and having any vote on it because I really don't understand. I think. Um, if you had listened to Chris carefully, Chris had made, Chris had bring a little important point, like, you know, who are the partners in this event and these events and stuff like that. I mean, if you want, if you want to put together an event and you should, we should be able to say to the board how much money or speak to the board before now to know that the board, the board can only give us $400, right? So that when we submit our budget, we know we're just getting $400 from the board and not to think that the whole twenty five hundred dollars going to come from 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 our board budget. I I am a little bit mixed up. I am not clear, so I think they need to be. To me, this need to go back, and maybe the chair and the and the district manager might need to come have a conversation with this with this committee on how to rule this thing. Miss only because of the time perspective, I would want to move forward with we approve it because if it can't happen because there's not enough budget. Or something else happened, um, then obviously this is something we scrap, and this is something that's under the purview of the district manager and, and the chair. We'll have the conversation about. Listen, if we can't do it, if four hundred dollars is not going to do it, and we can't raise the money, then it's a moot point. But at the very least, I think we've discussed it, and we have an idea of yes. what we're looking okay. at respectively, and we can do that. Uh, okay. and, and perhaps I'll, I'll talk to Dante, and maybe you know, to your point, I want to make sure that that everyone is clear in terms of what we're looking for and in terms of the process. Um, so, so we'll talk offline and we'll make sure yes. that this specific, you know, we will make sure that the entire board is on the same page with this. Okay, cool. Uh, Ms. Moses, I see you and then we'll have to close the question. Yeah, um, I just wanted to say that this is not new. You did it last year. And um, so I don't, I don't really understand what the problem is because even, even with food, last year the vendors actually came 
with some food and they were selling us the food. So we, we, we couldn't contribute to food, but if I think if just look at the plan from last year, it was very successful. If you just use that plan and move on. I mean, why are we rehearsing? I mean, saying the same old stuff over and over again when you know what we need and you know we can't go out and raise money. However, the vendors can come and set up shop like they did last year and we can eat and we can hear music and all that other good stuff. I think, Miss Moses, we're not talking. I think, I hope we don't mix up the um, portion with the street, with the oh, yeah, family, yeah. then this, then this. Um, internship event. Oh but, no, I was. But, I, no, I was but I think what I, what I think Ms. Moses' point is that I think in terms of you know from even from that event we know we couldn't pay for food, and yeah, we didn't but pay we for didn't food have so this there event was last year, right? Right. No, but I think there's just just some of the the general points in terms of what we could pay for. I think we we kind of have an idea of that. But but again, I'll I'll, I'll talk with the district manager and we'll make sure that you know we have guidelines that are very clear so that way everyone understands it between the chairs and the, the committee members as well. So that way there's a, some kind of a document for that. We'll develop that. Okay. All right. Um, so with that, uh, we are now going to call the question. Um, so I would ask Madam Secretary, can you call the roll? Because I know you did say that uh, I think you want to abstain from that. So we just want to make sure we have for the record. We don't have a minute, let me get it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kyrie? Yes, I'm present. No, in favor? You for, are you in favor of the motion to approve the event? Oh, yes. Yes, I'm present. Yes. Nicholas, thank, you. thank you. Nicholas Almanar? In favor. Fred Baptiste? Uh, Fred Baptiste votes in favor. Warren Burke? Yes. Francisco Leopold. Yes. Okay. One, two, three, four. Linda. I'm staying for now. I'm on the committee, so I don't want to be. So we've got. Oh, you skip. You skip, Chris. Oh no, Chris. I skipped Chris. I come back. Chris. Chris. In favor. Okay. Cool. All right. So we've got one, two, three, four. Five, six, four, one abstention, it's passed. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, okay, so those were all the action items. Uh, so at this time, now we're gonna go on to our last, uh, our next to last item. Uh, we're gonna set the agenda for, for the meeting. All right, so let's please note. Excuse me for so, interrupting, are we voting on the veil also? Thank you, sir. Oh, yes, thank I know. Much. About this. Thank you very much. My apologies. Okay. Thank you for catching that. Okay, so we had that last recommendation uh, on the Prospect Park Vale. So the um, Parks and Recreation and Culture um, Committee voted uh, in favor. All right. Uh, so at this time, are there any questions with respect to this app? Um, this uh, this uh, proposal. Can I clarify? Basically, the prospect park reliance is recording a letter of support right. from the board. Thank for you for that correction. Plan of the veil restoration. So that's what we're voting for. Thank you very much. Well, we have we haven't even voted for it. We haven't put a motion to it. Uh, motion on it yet. Um, okay. Well, do I have a motion to adopt the uh, the committee's recommendation to uh, provide the letter of support? So moved, sir, by me. I have a mo move by Linda Watson Lord. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Nicholas Almanor. Okay, uh, unreadiness, questions. Do we have any questions? Oh, sorry. Uh, I do see Teresa Westerdahl. Do you have a question? Yeah, for the veil proposal, I'm, I just would like to make sure that as a board member, when we're voting next week, I want to be sure as to what we're voting on because the proposal has changed several times and it's changed since the last time they were before us from what I understand. So I just wanted to be really clear because there was some blowback about these big structures they were gonna put in, the bathroom, it's, it's changed. And I'm really not sure what it is now. So I would like to know, and I'm sure other people would 
like to know what it is that we're we're voting to recommend yes to no one. Absolutely. Um, so what we can do is, Mr. Almanor, do you have a copy? Is there a copy of that last proposal on file with the office? Yes, it is. Uh, it was part of a presentation in our January meeting. Okay. So if you go and look at the YouTube video, the newest proposal is on there. Okay. Uh, Dante, yeah, I don't want to look at the video. I want to see. The, no, no, no we'll, 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 we'll make sure. No, no, we'll what? forward the proposal. We'll make sure we have the proposal and that I'll be forward, forwarded. So the proposal that was voted on by the committee will be provided to the board. Okay, thanks. Okay. All right. Are there any other questions? Uh, I'm sorry, hold on. Chris, I see your hand. Um, and Ms. Almanor, do you have another question? No, I'm just lowering my hand. Okay. Chris, did you have a question? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, Nicola, could you remind us what they, like why they're asking for a letter of support from us and what if any controversies surround the veil restoration? Uh, well, I think it's part of their procedure before they proceed with any change in Prospect Park. They have to get approval of the community board. Well, they came last year with one proposal and we had a lot of questions. They came back this time with a new proposal that met most of the questions we have. I don't have the specific on top of my head. I have to pull it out and look at it again. And we'll get a copy of that proposal and uh, we could always forward it to people before we vote for it at the general meeting. So uh, I'll reach out to the prospect park alliance and ask them to send uh, the, because they had a PowerPoint presentation showing all the drawings and all the other stuff and all the buildings that's going there. Some people saw the difference between the first proposal and the second, because some of the questions we have they change because of our question, they have changed the original one they had. So um, let's get it to everyone from them. I'll reach out to the Prospect Park Alliance to see if they could send us a copy that can be disseminated to, to all the board members and that will be available for the general meeting for everybody to see. A question, Cher. Was yeah. this not an action item at a January meeting also? Not when Ms. Messada talked about changes, I had to go back. Because I saw the same letter of support. It, it, it was it considered, was but it wasn't different? voted. It wasn't okay, voted okay. on. Yeah. It hadn't All been right, voted good. on. So, okay, so that's thanks. why it's coming back to this month. Okay. All right. Um okay, with that, I'm sorry, uh, I'm losing it. We we voted. Was there a motion to uh, adopt your there was a motion already? So made. There was okay, a move. motion. We just got a, it was in discussion. So it was in discussion. Thank you. Okay. Got call the I, question. I, I lost it for a second. Yeah. So we're just going to call the question. Um, all right. So let me ask this. Are there any objections to common consent? None. <clears throat> okay. Hearing no objections, we're going to, uh, I, I see this is approved by the executive committee by common consent and will be considered by the board. Okay, thank you very much for that. Now we're going to go to the, the next item. We're going to consider the uh, agenda. So public session. So we're gonna have the public session, um, which is going to be, do we have any presentations, uh, Dante? No presentations. Okay, so we have SLA applications, the two that we approved. for um, was Irie, I had the note, um, I Irie Vibes. Vibes. Yes. Thank you. Irie Vibes and Schmorgsberg. Okay, after that, we are going to have public commentary. Sorry, uh, CHN. The organ misspelled this, but okay. Then we've got a public comment, after which we'll have acknowledgments. After which we will have um, 
Yeah, then we're going to go into the business session. We roll call. I'm sorry, in the public session, actually, we're going to start welcoming rules of conduct. Okay, roll call. We will have the approval of minutes. After the approval of minutes, we will have committee reports. After committee reports, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo, we'll have the district manager's report. Uh, Chris, you wish to give a treasurer's report? Yes, please. Okay, we're gonna do the uh, treasurer's report. After which we will have the chair's report. Then we're gonna have our voting items. We will have uh, the two SLA applications. We will have, um, sorry, two SLA, what else? We just discussed this too. We're going to have, uh, oh, I'm sorry, yes, the, um, the job fair, the job and internship fair. And then we are going to have the, the letter of support for the bail. And we will consider amendments, bylaws amendments. Similar to last month, the goal will be, we will see where we are. We're gonna set a time limit uh, as well as limits for debate. Uh, and we will adhere to that and we will see what we will consider at that time. And once time has expired, we will move on unless there is a motion to extend. Um, okay, then after that, we, I'm sorry. Okay, I do not believe we have any old business. We have unfinished business, new business, and we adjourn. Okay, are there any items missing from the agenda as I stated? Okay, hearing none, I will entertain a motion to adopt the agenda as stated. Question. Okay, it's moved by Francisca Leobold. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Kyrie Aline. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Um, I haven't heard any objections. Is there any objection to approve, uh, adopting this agenda by common consent? Hearing none, um, hearing no objections, uh, this, adept, uh, this agenda is adopted by common consent and will be presented to the board for um, the meeting next week, Tuesday, the 28th. Um, okay, so with that, is there any other old business for this uh, board, to, uh, this committee to consider? You know, it's Warren. Yes, sir. Um, nothing to do with the agenda, but just for general information. Have we heard anything about where we're going to be holding meetings in terms of the COVID mandates and their expiring? A uh, good question. This one, I think we're covered, and Dante, please correct me. We're covered at least through this meeting this month. I don't believe I've heard anything yet, but we should probably be expecting something to come shortly on, uh, with regards to what we're doing next month. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. And at least for the general board, we've already put in the request for the permit for MS61. So, yeah, we'll just keep everyone um, informed as information comes out. So you put in the the permit for what months? We have a standing, you have a standing um, request, correct? Yes. 
So yeah, we've had a standing request. So the district office on a monthly basis confirms if we're going to use it or if we're not. Okay. But it's standing. Thank we you. have it. Absolutely. All right. Are there any and other that's questions? That's what district, you said district 61? I mean, PS 61? MS 61. MS yeah, 61. MS, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. All right, any other questions? Uh, Ms. Ms. Westerdahl, I'll see your hand. Yeah, just a couple of questions. One, is there a time limit as to how late these board meetings go? Because it would be fortuitous for them to end, like, you know, I think 9.30 is late enough. Uh, and, go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, just the, the, a time limit with these meetings. Um, Sometimes they go too late and I'm, I'm not gonna be able to, to stay so long with, for them anymore. And um, the other thing is for when the committees have guest speakers or have a certain agenda, it would be nice to know because sometimes, like I went to the housing meeting one time just because I like to go and it was quite, quite a big fiasco and I would have liked to have known in advance before I went, because sometimes I'm interested in the speakers or what's happening at the committees. And there's no, there's not always a way to know without like looking at the agenda. It would be nice if it was on the, the calendar or something more easy to just look at and say, oh, this committee is having this speaker. I, I want to go to that. And I could plan for it, you know, or if it's just business as usual. But when there's a special thing happening, I'd like to know. And I'm sure other people would too. Well, that, that'll be some of the conversation we can have with the chairs in terms of, or just, just a note for the chairs in terms of, especially if you know you're bringing in speakers to that note, if you let us know in advance, we can make sure that as we send out agendas or if we're sending out notices to the committees, we can put that out as well. Um, and particularly if you know you're having a, a, you know, a high note speaker, let us know, because uh, we can try and create some kind of a flyer or something to that effect in terms of, and that can go out as part of the constant contact or the blast. But, but this is yeah, it would be nice. Yeah, it would be nice to know for our, our right. residents no. to know because there's no way to know that right now. It's uh, very it's hard to ascertain no. that information, yes. and I'd no, love. No, no, absolutely, duly noted. Um, now, as for the time, the meeting uh, time limits, um, absolutely, I concur. I hate long meetings, but that means that we really need to make sure that we are staying tight. Um, I think we're starting to get there. Remember, this is not the, you know, the conversations happen in committee meetings. So if there is a legitimate question uh, or a question that really we need for the information purposes, ask a question, we'll get an answer. But we got to stop, you know, one of the things we got to start doing is minimizing the amount of conversations we're having on stuff. This is the time for us to meet, to take actions on stuff. Obviously, some clarifying questions, but we're not going to have full-fledged debates on, on topics as we meet. Um, it's something we're working on. I think we're going to get better at. Uh, and I think as we do that, we'll, we'll we'll get more efficient and you'll see the times come down. The only thing I would say is this too, is um, there's a lot of work we have to get done. So to that extent where it's like, you know, you know, and this is part of the reason why we try and look at these agendas as we set them to figure out what's achievable, what we can do, um, what we don't have to do and what we can defer to committees and, and those kinds of conversations. It's a balancing act when we're working on it, but, um, but we're definitely keeping that in mind because nobody, it's no fun for anybody to be here past 9.30. I, 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 I want to really support Mr. Ms. Westerdahl on that. Like tonight, I time each session. We begin at 7.06. By 7.36, we begin the committee chairs to check in. And that takes us all the way to 8.43. Um, your check-in started at 8.59. And by 9.15, we was ready to check, set the agenda for the board meeting. So I think... Um, we really got to look at our timing with reporting and questions from our committee chairs. If, I mean, you know, every time we might not be able to have like, a written committee, but I know last year we were doing good with committee chairs sending in written um, their meetings and stuff was, stuff was doing good. Now we are lacking a little bit, so we might. And, and we'll definitely make sure, uh, and that, that's something I'll look at as chair, and I ask all my chairs to do that for their meetings as well. Uh, we got to keep it tight. We'll, 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 I'll definitely endeavor to keep it much tighter. Um, and, you know, like I said, to, the, to that effect, we might have to, to eliminate or, or, you know, or really severely limit the, the questions too. But 
but all together, I think we're working to keep it tight. We'll be there. Yeah. Uh, but with that respect, let's let's do this rather than keep you for the next. Uh, let's go. <laughs> um, okay, so I think seeing no other uh, business uh, at this time, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion oh, to adjourn. Oh, Nobody don't want to go now. Motion to adjourn. So all moved. Right. So moved. Right. It's been moved and seconded. Yes. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Hi, here is the majority. Stand adjourned. Uh, Madam Secretary, time is 9.55. Thank you. Have a great.